All right. Welcome to Battle Cage. It's your boy Scythe. Ten minutes early because you know I shows up on time every time. Just in time. I wanted to catch this fight, by the way. Um, that was kind of my um uh target time. So to get on the Julio Arce Herbert Burns. So far, pretty entertaining fight. And um, let's get it. Round one. We're about to go. All right, round one. We got it. Julio Arce, Herbert Burns. Arce missing just, you know, about a pound over uh, yesterday at the weigh-ins on the scale. But uh, he is the projected winner of this fight. I have the lifelines, guys, pulled up for you from my book. So you guys can follow along with me. Got the split screen open, so we have the stats on on display as well. All these lines are already closed. We can refresh the page. Both men feeling each other out. Herbert Burns try to bully a little bit of her uh, Arce, trying to assume the oxygen control. He opens up the fight with a, uh, one significant strike. I guess one thing for Herbert Burns is to avoid a barn burner and not get caught. You know what I mean? Because he is chinny, if you will. I hate using that word, but it is what it is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Three minutes and 28 seconds into the fight. No significant action thus far. Julio Arce, as you can see, live line minus 260. Herbert Burns leading the fight with a little bit of a statistics. Four significant strikes, two legs, one body, one head. So far, no real action. Julio Arce now with a counter left. That kind of set back Herbert Burns just a bit. Herbert Burns just is not as aggressive as he should be in most of his fights. But he always looks good in the first. Let's see if the gas tank holds up and plays dividend in the later fights. That has been his blemish thus far. So we're 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Herbert Burns. Oh, there's a timeout call. It was a low strike by... Oh, yeah. A left... No, I'm sorry. A right knee to the... To the... To the family jewels, if you will. So Harbor Burns loses the position as a result. He's pressuring. Herbert Burns is pressuring once again. Looking for a little bit of a level change. Playing the gauge, uh, the cage to, uh, to his advantage. Lifeline reads. Uh, I have a closed line life, lifeline here. I'm going to open up a second book. Open DraftKings for references. Another low blow. Another low blow. Let's see if the ref takes a point now. Oh, oh. Oh, he's going to take a point. All 
<laughs> this referee doesn't play. First warning and then a point deduction. I don't know if that's a right thing to do or not, but that's up to you guys. But uh, yeah, I mean, kind of have to stop that, right? So let's see. Let me see how he's gonna go. I mean, he's already losing the fight at this point by a by a great margin. He could lose this round, and that's big. That's huge. That is huge, guys. Very significant. You know what I'm saying? Very significant. Very significant. Julio Arce looks like he might have picked up a little bit of a steam here. Looking a little bit of loose, picking up some points. He's now a point above Herbert Burns. Herbert Burns is going for a... Nah, he's not going to do no more knees now. Up against the clinch. Pressuring Julio Arce against the fence. That point deduction is going to be extremely detrimental for Herbert Burns down the line. Should it go to the to the to the uh, to the distance? Julio Arce, clean body shot. Just about twenty seconds to go into the fight. I mean, round one is going to be Julio Arce just by default. Herbert Burns with two groin, sh uh, two groin um, shots back to back. You know what I'm saying? And now he gets dropped. Well, not like you know, just gets dropped, like physically dropped. Yeah, Herbert Burns is already in a defensive position from the ground. He he's already gassed. It's over. This fight is um is done. I don't know how he's gonna come in now. Statistically, if you look at it, significant strikes, thirteen to eight. Uh, five to four, four to four, leg kicks four, and just a uh, slight control time, just a shy of one minute control time for Herbert Burns against Julio Arce. Herbert Burns just kind of doubled in his underdog odds to plus four hundred. Julio Arce plus, minus six fifty. I would have to attribute that to the one-point deduction uh, to Harbor Burns. So, we are in round two now. We are in round two. All right. Holy Arsa should... Try to run away in this fight if he's going for a decision. Opens up the fight with a straight left. Oh, Holy Arce. Two times. Oh, a flying knee to Herbert Burns. He looks aggressive starting this fight. Down a point. Going in for the control time. He has to be careful with the knees. He already lost a point, so anything more is just going to be it's over. He has to be aggressive, I would agree. Opening up with some aggression, that's fine. The odds are close, so let's see if something... Oh! Oh, Herbert Burns goes down. Herbert Burns' chin is... is He doesn't have a chin. He does not have a chin. Crazy. He does not have a chin. The man, the man lives without a chin. He will be cut if he loses his fight. And he is losing his fight. Just eats a right, I mean, a left kick to the temple. Counters with a left. To Herbert Burns' credit, he is aggressive. Julio Arso is now feeling up. He can't take a punch. It's over. It's over. 
It's over now. That's it. It's over. Knockout. Knockout. And that's all, folks. Second round knockout. Herbert Burns does not have a chin. The man is chinless. And he, and that was his last outing in the UFC. That's his last outing in the UFC. He's finished, guys. This is his third KO loss in a row. He will be out of the UFC after tonight. He's done. Julio Arso gets it done by KO. So that was the last time we saw Herbert Burns in UFC. He's going to... I don't think he should fight. The man has no chin at all. I mean... We say this all the time, but now it's this is the, the clearest thing you can see. A man without a chin. So Julio Arce by KO. Let's pull up the next fight. That is insane. That is insane, guys. Verna Genderoba. Versus Lupi Godinez is going to be next. That's next. Mm. UFC 300 is creeping up, guys. Playing some promos. Yeah, that's going to be a great night. That's going to be awesome. Julio Arce by KO. That's crazy. Yeah, you just teed off on him. And as soon as as soon as Herbert Burns ate one punch, he just shelled up. Couldn't answer. Couldn't do anything. He's done. Herbert Burns is off to bare knuckles, man. Uh, no, not even bare knuckles. He can't even... Herbert Burns for retirement. He has no chin. He he's just done. He can't take a punch. He is finito.
Lupi Godinez, Verna returning, plus 180, minus 215. I don't even know what the play is here. Uh, fight starts round two. Lupi's probably going to go to the decision here. She's tough. Verna's going to be, you know, coming off that injury, so she's going to be a little bit reckless in the beginning. Significant strike is going to be going to, to Godinez here. But Verna hits hard, so... What's the over under in this one? Round props. Minus 310. Hell no. Damn. Not doing that. <laughs> Not doing that. Oh, Mr. Viral isn't here. Let's go. Lupita by KO points. Yeah, not gonna happen. Oh, um, uh, double decision. Okay. Double chance. Lupita by decision. She ain't knocking Verna out. That's not gonna happen. I don't see that happening. Lupita by point is minus one twenty-five. Yeah, Lupita by KO is minus uh is plus seven fifty. That's not gonna happen. That's for sure. I think we're not even gonna take any action in this fight. That's stupid. We're getting ready, we're getting warmed up. We're getting warmed up before the units are in. Let the, let the night go. Still a couple of great fights ahead. So far, I'm, I'm going to say it's pretty good. A lot of knockouts. Malcolm by knockout. Ibu Aslan in the third round. Coming back, knockout. Great value on that guy. Started off minus. Started as a plus. Went down to a minus. Boosted up to a plus and got the job done. Dennis Bazookin was high in this dude, man. Right from the beginning. He got the job done by KO in the third round. Julio Arce by KO. A lot of KOs. Wow. I'm surprised. Today, I mean, it's a live crowd, right? We've been starving for two weeks. No live crowd, and now we have a live crowd. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of action. It's going to be a lot of action. The lady's about to go down. Verna, Jenda, Roba, Gadinas. It's going to be a good fight, but, you know, Verna coming off of that injury, that's kind of doesn't sit well with me, but we're, we're going to have no action in this fight. Absolutely. I mean, that's just no action fight. If you are going to bet, good luck. I wish you the best of luck. You're going to need it. Um... Leaning loopy, rightfully, but anything can happen. It is a female's fight. Verna, man, she's always game, so that's something I gotta admire her for. Um, let's see how she's gonna look off coming off that injury. That's something to consider. Coming off that injury, she got everything though, you know, so she can match loopy striking, she can match loopy with control, ground. Got the submissions, down pack. Loopy is the aggressive fighter. She is always the one dictating the fight. She could get reckless, but um, let's see what happens. 35 years of age for Verna Genderoba. Loopy Godin is coming here five years younger. <sighs> I think that's a live fight, if anything. If you're going to take any action, take it live. That's, that would be my recommendation here. Don't rush, you know what I mean? Loopy co coming out first. Hand up. One thing going for Loopy, you know, I like my Mexican fighters. Male or female, it don't matter. Sipping on some Red Bull, saving energy for the main card. That's what I'm interested in more. But so far, good fights. Lots of knockouts, like I said. Lots of knockouts. One, two, three, four knockouts thus far. Four knockouts. That's that's a good way to start a UFC fight night. You know what I mean? That's a good way to start a UFC fight night. Live from Atlantic City. So no hating over there. Loopy first now. She looks okay. She looks confident. She always comes in looking confident. That's one thing I got to credit Loopy for. She's in great shape. She's in great shape, man. Her shoulder muscles, she, you can see that. So, standing up tall, stoic, very good. Like her composure, she had a bit of a nervous energy at the face-off. I didn't like that. I sensed a little bit of nervous energy at the face-off. I watched the face-offs this morning on the clear mind. They didn't want to, I was tired yesterday. I didn't want to, you know, make any conclusions. But uh, she looks okay now. She looks confident. Let's see Verna come in now. Hands up. 
All right, Lupi looked good. Her walk was good. She looks confident. She looks great physically. All right, Vern is making her way. Got her signature hat on. Looks calm, as always. Yeah, she looks all right, too. Let's see. Coming to her Brazilian music. Singing along. All right, good good energy. All that plays. I, I watch everything, guys. I might overanalyze. I might pick on some little nitty-gritty things, but I watch everything. So, so far, good body composure. Let's see how she's going to look. She hasn't fought in a while, too. When was her last fight? Her last fight was May of 2023, where she won Marina Rodriguez. How about that? How about that? Coming off two wins back-to-back, -back, Angela Hill and R Marina Rodriguez. So, you know, got injured, was out for almost a year. Look at that, nine months recovery time. She looks good. She just took her shirt off. She looks good. This this should be a good like good females fight. Should be a good females fight. Say what you want, but it should be a good fight. Thirty five years old though. That's like scaring me. You know what I mean? Lupita right there at her peak. She's going to be at her peak right now. Verna coming in into the ring. Just already made a full lap. She's warming up. Three-inch reach advantage for Verna Genderoba. 5'3". You know, just a sl she's going to be a slightly bigger girl. I will, I will credit Verna for that. So, physically, slightly bigger. Let's see what happens. We are in round one now. We might load up some three units just in case. I think I had a deposit bonus too. All right, we're opted in for a deposit bonus, so that's good. Lopi Godinez just got officially introduced. Bruce Buffer now introducing Verna Genderoba, man. She got a crazy stare. <laughs> she got a crazy stare. Great record, though. You have to acknowledge 19 and 3. That's a good record. She looks good. To beat Marina Rodriguez in her last fight, that's impressive. That's impressive. Coming in at plus 180 dog, there is value. I'm not gonna talk you off that line, but I would say let's see how the how let's see how it goes. Couple of minutes. Let's see. Couple of minutes instead of fighting. Let's see how the money swings are gonna be coming in left and right. We'll see that. All right, intros are officially done. Plus 172. I guess maybe some people are putting some action in. Well, let's see. Too early to do. Too early for a live play. All right, let's see. Let's see if, if Lupita can get her down in the first two, two and a half minutes. That would tell me everything. Both girls in the middle now, trying to establish. Burn opening up with her left, right. Good defense for Lupi. Good boxing stance. Great boxing stance. She's opening up with a one-two of her own. Verna trying to go for a level change, but Loopy stopping that. Loopy has a good body stance. She's eating punches, guys. Verna's touching her up. Mmm, great counter for Loopy. Okay. Great boxing stance. Great.
dead center for both females. Here's the rebound in money. Verna Genderobo going for a single leg fence control. Verna went for a takedown. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can drop some three units. There you go. Three units locked in now. Lupita's on top. Minus 260.
Uh, sorry about that. Had a quick phone call to attend to. We're back in the second round. Lupita's trying to go for, looks like a heel hook of some sorts. Jen DeRobo's fighting off as much as she can. She's in a predicament, but she's, uh, she's throwing some punches. So she's, she's putting some punches on Godina's face. Pow, pow, pow. I don't know how you um, scored this round. I mean, she is fighting, so you can't just deny that. It's funny how gender Gen, Gen, ah, gender Roba is getting control time, even from this position, because she is controlling the fight. She is putting work. She is putting. Oh, she's about to get out too. She's trying to get out. The legs are locked in. They're just interlocked. Oh, what just happened? Oh, I was going to say, I was like, what the hell just happened? That's crazy. All right, so both ladies are up. That was a little glitch in the system, right? A little glitched up. Plus 138 for Gender Robo. I think that's correct. Minus 182 for Lupi. She won the first round. Second round is hard to... Hard to gauge. It's hard. depends how you see it. Even though she was in a heel hook position, she was still throwing. So, at best, it's one one. At worst, because I would disagree with it, it's two one. Loopy. I think it's one one. I think that's the right thing to say. It's one one. Hmm. Slight, significant uh, head strikes advantage for Lupi Godinez. 33 significant strikes to 25. Four minutes of control time for Gender Roba. One out of five takedowns for Gender Roba. We're going into the third round. We're in the third round. Let's get it. Let's see who wants it more. Let's see who wants it more. It's 1-1. Let's see who wants it more. Gender Robo opening up with some, some significant strikes. 1-2. Loopy coming in strong. Just eat to left. Gender Robo going for a single. Against the cage. If she could get this fight down early in the round, it's going to be Gender Robo. If she can get Loopy down. If. She's eating some knees to the body. Gender Roba is now jumping on Loopy. That's a bad game plan. Loopy can just take her down. Loopy coming in with 1 2. Gender Roba firing back. Close fight, 1 1. At least at my card. Loopy coming in 1 2. One minute into the third round. The stats on the screen are giving 54 significant head strikes to uh, Gender Roba. The ESPN is giving it to Lupita, Lupita Godinez. Both girls are trading. Gender Roba is answering. Some optics for Gender Roba. Some good optics, some body, some work. About three minutes to go. A little bit of fury. Gender Robo's trying to control once again. Loopy's fighting good of the control. Reverses. She's reverses. Three minutes to go. Loopy's in control right now. Close round, very close. Ooh, a nice elbow. A nice elbow for Lupi Godinez. Gender Robo's trying to answer. She just eats a left right now. Level changes, and she tries. She can. Lupi is hitting hard. Lupi's hitting hard. 
She is hitting hard this round. Two body shots back to back. Just eats a left counter. Genderoba with a left right. Ooh, Genderoba just ate two shots. Lupi's winning this round. Lupi's winning this round. Ooh, she hit. She hit her. Yeah, good boxing for, good boxing for uh, Godinez. She's eating some shots right now. She's eating some shots. I guess the pressure control is going to be to uh, Verna, but she's not doing anything here. Desperately trying to get her to the ground. She does. She does. She took her down. They gave it to her. There's a second takedown. She doesn't have it clean. Godinez is on like her knees. She could get up. She could get up. She could get, oh, she gets, oh, Godinez gets, oh, scrambles. Man, Jen the Robo's, oh, she gets her back. Wow. Oh, Godinez can throw her down. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. She got her neck. Piggyback. Jen the Robo piggybacking. Oh, that's good optics. Oh, she's going for, oh, she's going for it under her chin. Oh, she's going for it. She's trying to get the submission. Her legs are locked in on Godinez. She's going to get tired, though. There's only a minute left. Oh, she's going for the... Oh, the referee's doing a good job. Oh, that is good optics for Jenda Robo. Oh, look, she's going under the net. Oh, she got her. Let me see. Oh. It's on the jaw. It's on the jaw. It's on the jaw. She's going for the rear naked. She's going for the rear naked. She's going to get this round. She got 30 seconds to work. Yeah, if, she, if they give her the first round in this one, it's Jenda Robo just won the fight. Especially with the control and sequence ending right now. She's on her back, piggybacking Loopy. Great optics for her. Six minutes of control time. Three submission attempts already. Godina's trying to throw her off. Good control for Vernoff off the back. Yeah, but Godina's got opened up. But she's bleeding and dominant control from Verna. You have to give it to her. You have to give it to her. She definitely won the fight. She definitely, I mean, listen, we've seen UFC bullshit shenanigans. If you're asking me, I think Verna got it. You know what I'm saying? I think she won the first round because her odds dropped tremendously. Her second round was iffy, but it's not like she was fish out of water. Even though she was locked in with Lupi in a, in a heel hook, they were both exchanging. You know what I'm saying? Verna was still throwing shots. And the third round, I mean, there's no denying that it's gender roba. Lupi had good moments. She started strong. She was punching. She was winning the boxing, but she got opened up as well. So, you know, it's all in the hands of the judges how they saw the fight. I'm going to score Verna Gender Roba. You know what I'm saying? She definitely had the sequence ending, you know, uh, positions. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Again, it's how you're going to score this fight. Let's see. It's, it's in the judges right now. It's all in the judges' hands. Looks like there's a little bit of delay there, you know, trying to... I mean, you can't, den you can't deny the amount of control time that Gender Robo put, especially in the third round. Three rounds, let's see the decision. Verna Genderoba, yes, let's go. Let's go. Life play, baby. You guys saw what I did. You guys saw what I did. Let's go. Three units live play on gender. That's the right. Thank God, bro. There's justice in Atlantic City. Let's go. We got some justice today. Shout out to the judges, man. Shout out to the judges. Two weeks of getting rammed in back to back to back, man. Shout out to the judges. Biggest unit play for the night. Let's go. Come on, yo. Needed that, too. Needed that. 
We had the right leans, man. We had the live call on Ibu Aslan. We had the right call on um, Julio Arce by KO. We had the right call for Dennis Bazookian, Moneyline. So far, we're doing good stuff, man. This is a fight that I'm, I told you guys in my breakdown uh, with my brother. I will not be placing any live plays, even if I see it. I'll call it. I won't, I won't play it because I love both guys. You know what I'm saying? I like Nate the Train. I like Jamal Emers. I think it's a good fight so far to just sit and just, just watch and enjoy. They're both athletic. They're both strong. You know, Jamal Emers is very, very dangerous, well-rounded, well-equipped fighter. So it's going to be it's gonna be a good fight. And you know, you know Nate the Train always coming in with an octane energy. That great win against uh, David Onama. Still, I still remember that live play. Good fight. And I watched Nate the Trainer. I mean, like, I just, I'm a fan, man. Loved all his fights overseas in M1, beating out the Russians, man. And that's not easy. Going to the enemy territory. And Jamal Evers, man, he's going to be game. Both men coming in. In their, you know, mid-30s, 35 years of age for Nate Landwehr. Jamal Emers, 34, two-inch reach advantage. Physically, I think they're going to look the same, you know what I'm saying? Just a slight physical advantage for Jamal Emers. Maybe a slight athleticism advantage, but um, yeah. It's going to be a good fight, man. I got hype for Verna, man. Let's go. Shout out. Shout out. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Viral actually put this on. <laughs> Verna is man. <laughs> that is funny. I got kicked out from uh FanDuel over here. Got FanDuel because it's easier to to read. I usually don't play FanDuel. I usually reserve DraftKings for all my MMA plays. But but it's easier for presentation because uh FanDuel is a bit dark. So I decided to go in. Here I am I'm logging in. So my accounts. Just caught a nice live unit play for Verna 3 unit play. So we're back in the map. Please with that. As you can see right here down in the bottom, $720. So we, we're alive now. And I probably, I'll probably, if I don't see something real, I'll just stay, just stay in here. Take that home. You know what I'm saying? Take that home. Good play. Good play. That was a good read. We're going to go with Shitty by Knockout, just giving you guys a heads up in the main card. We're going to go with Shitty by Knockout. The weight cut is dangerous, but, you know, that's what we're going with. Nate, the train, plus 158. Jamal Emers, minus 188. I'm not hating the live lines. I'm not at all. Jamal Emers coming in right now looking great. Man, his his abdominal muscles is just on fleek, man. I'm gonna hit him up and say, what does he do to train those muscles? But that's genetics, man. That's genetics. Like, he looks good though. Nate the train coming out now. Let's go, Nate. I'm just gonna be a fan, man. I'm just gonna be a fan. I'm just wanna be a fan. I don't wanna look at the lines. I don't wanna look at all this nonsense. I just want to enjoy this fight. This is the fight that I've been waiting for. I don't care about anything else. I'm just a fan, guys. I don't care if I see anything. I'm not putting money on this fight. I'm not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be true. I'm going to be reserved. He's coming in. Good, good energy. Nate the train. Bouncing. Let's go. I like that. I like that. I like that. He's looking good. He looked very, very dry on the scale yesterday. Very dry. Completely dehydrated. I mean, he cut a lot of weight, but he got a lot of muscle mass this time. Because I'm a fan, I, you know, I kind of like, you know, I follow his stories on Instagram and whatnot. Watch his video. He was training very hard. He was coming in with a lot of energy into this fight. He put in a lot of work in this camp. I can, I, I can attest to that. You know what I'm saying? He's looking very good. His, his, his arms are shredded right now. Shredded. Good energy. He's going to need that. He's going to need that. He's going to need to systematically break Jamal Emers down if he, if he wants to win this fight. Jamal Emers coming in here with 20-7 and seven record. 17-5 and five for uh, Nate Detrain. Significant strikes landed per minute. 
is going to be 6.14 to 5.10 favoring Nate the Train here. It's going to play a dividend, I believe. Let's go, man. This is just this is just a good fight. This is just a good fight. Two inch reach advantage for Jamal Emers. Let's go. Let's just enjoy this fight. Jamal Emers is going to be the first uh, fighter introduced by Bruce Buffer. One hundred forty-five made weight yesterday for the featherweight. So you know, true professional. So did Nate Landwehr. Came in exactly one forty-five. True professional. Jamal Emers looks ready. Nate the train is getting introduced now by Bruce Buffer. All right, Nate the Train is officially introduced here. Keith Peterson is the referee for this fight. Let's go. Vanessa Hansen, the ring girl, just exited the octagon round one. Let's get it popping, guys. Let's get it. First round. Let's go. No touch. They go straight to the business. Ooh. Jamal Emers opening up with a nice trade. Oh, one, two for Jamal. Oh, Jamal looking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jamal is unloading, guys. He is unloading. He's He looks crisp. He looks fast. He's the faster guy here. He already, he's hurting Nate. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, guys. Oh, my goodness. He is unloading. He is so fast. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Neat is already red. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, guys. That's why I didn't want to go with my feelings here. We picked, my brother and I, we picked Jamal Emers, man. He's going to be the cleaner fighter here. Minus 430 already. Live line, as you can see. So fast. Oh, my goodness. 11 head strikes already. 11 to 0. Nate is already wearing the battle marks, which is not unusual. Oh, my goodness. Left, right. Left, right for Jamal Emers. Man, my, my hands are crossed right now. I don't even know. This is crazy. Jamal has to be careful not to, you know, empty the gas tank early because I don't care what anybody says. Nate, yo, it's hard to put him out. You know what I mean? Let's go. Nate is in his fight, bro. Shit, I'm about to take Nate lifeline in the second round. Oh, he's making a burn fighter now. He's coming back. I'm about to go 1.2 units, guys. I'm about, I'm about to go 1.2 units, Nate. Ah. See, come on, Nate. Give me some. Give me some. He ate a lot of shots in the beginning. He's not. He's in the fight, though. He's in the fight. I'm going to take it. 1.2 units, man. And that's it. That's going to be my only play on this one. Come on. I just want to support my guy, man. Nate is looking good. Emers is fighting though. He's so fast. He is so fast. But Nate, Nate took a lot of shots in the beginning. L took a lot of shots. But you know, Nate could come back if he could, if he could, if he if he's just gonna keep mo moving forward and you know counter. Looks like Jamal slowed down. He threw a lot in the beginning. Nate is leaking bad, but it's okay. We've seen Nate bleed, man. We this is nothing. We've seen him bleed, bro. We've seen him bleed terribly and come back. Ooh, nice right by Nate. Oh, my goodness, Nate. Oh, he's coming out. 
Oh, dirty boxing, Nate. Dirty boxing. Dirty boxing. Oh, my goodness. We got to fight. Oh, Nate is coming in tough right now. Got him more. Oh, he's dirty boxing right now. Clinch control. He's throwing everything on Emmers. Oh, those uppercuts were tough. Jamal Emmers returns. Yeah, that was crazy dirty. But oh, look at the one, two for Emmers. If you look at the significant strikes, you would never say it started 11 and 0. You would never say, look at that 20, 21 head strikes for Nate. He got to be careful, though. One minute, he's eating a lot right now. He needs to counter. A lot, of, a lot of blood for Nate, but it's okay. We've seen him. We've seen him. This is what we know him for. This is what we love him. This is why. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. He just took one, two from Emmers. But he's fighting, guys. Come on. He's fighting. Minus 142 for, for Nate Landwehr. Look at that. He was plus 300 just a minute ago. Literally a minute ago. It's going to be the systematic breakdown that's going to allow him to win this fight. 25 seconds. Oh, he is hurting him. Oh, he dropped him. He dropped him. Nick the train. Nick the train. Nick the fucking train. Oh, my God. I had to put 1.2 units. I saw my boy. I just had to, guys. Wow, need the train. Need the train. Let's go. That's why we love him. Nate the fucking train. Dirty boxing gets it done. Let's go. TKO. KO. It's not even a TKO. Let's go. Lived it. Lived it. Let's go. I had to, guys. I had to hit that one. I'm sorry, man. Nate the train. 1.2 units plus two plus 280. Four point. Uh, what is it gonna be like? Like like 3.56 units. I'll take it, guys. I'll fucking take. It. I don't give a shit. I I saw what I saw. He started coming back. Nate the train, boy. Nate the train. Let's go, man. Holy moly. Holy moly. Don't deny this man. Heart of a lion, man. Heart of a champion. The true dog of dogs, man. Talk about a dog. Talk about a dog. He was getting pieced up. 11 and no start. 11 head strikes. He was wobbly, wobbly, but we came back. Let's go. Let's fucking go, man. Wow. Wow, absolutely wow. Goosebumps, what a great fight. I knew it. I told you guys, this is this the this the fight I wanted. This is exactly the fight I wanted. I didn't know it was gonna end in the first round, but look at that. Man, that's crazy. Jamal Emmer starting 11 and 0 head strikes, completely busting up Nate Landwehr. Heart of a champion, man. Oh my goodness. Love it. I love it, guys. Like, like this stream. Hang out with me. You know, we've been cleaning units so far. Gonna be 10 units. That's good, man. Oh my goodness. Wow, what a fight. And that brings us into the main card now. So we can pull this up. Let's go. Wow, goosebumps. I want to hear this, man. I want to hear this guy. I don't care what anybody says. I'm gonna put some volume right now. I'm gonna put some volume. I gotta I gotta listen to my boy Nate, man. Love this guy. Do love him. And I apologize for picking against him. But I told you guys, that's emotional. I love this guy. Look at that nasty gash on his head. You can't tell me that he was not in trouble. Bar knuckle. Late. The trade. Land. Where? Love it. Man, he had a nasty gash. He was terrible. <laughs> I love Nate on the mic.
Man. Let me hear it. <laughs> oh, he got the crowd fired up. Man, heart of a warrior, heart of a lion. <laughs> Young Jean-Claude Van Damme. Man, that beautiful right hook into a overhand right. And then, oh, uppercut. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Give him the bonus. That's the knockout of the night. That's performance of the night. That's the best fight of the night. Although there's a lot of knockouts, but... Yo, fifth, yo, Dana White, you better get your checks books out. A lot of knockouts tonight. Man, what a fight. What a fight, guys. Whoo! Man, you got to love this. So far, the prelims delivered and then some. Let's recap so far. Let's recap thus far. Let's get this off. So... We're going to have this on for the main card, the lines on the left. We're going to recap um, at, uh, Pacheco versus uh, Lohgren. Final decision for the Irish fighter. He gets the job done. KO win for Jacob Malcolm over uh, Petrovsky. That was a nasty knockout. He started strong and he was not backing down. Ibu Aslan versus Tukaj. That was a great show, a great rematch at 205. Round one, you could argue it was like going back and forth. It was an even fight up into the third round. Um, they were the first the first round was you know a little bit slowish. Then they opened up in the second, back and forth, back and forth, power shots. You know, Tukaj, Anton, I don't care what you say, he was still in this fight. He brought the fight to Ibu, had him, you know. Had him opened up. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of a low blow situation. I think that favored Aslan just a bit because he, you know, rejuvenated and got his win, his second win, if you will. And he gets the job done in the third round uh, via a knockout. So he was definitely throwing a lot of, you know, wild swings. He's going he's gonna to find himself in trouble as he moves on. You cannot always fight uh, fire with fire. And he's, he's got to be careful. Dennis Bazukian, uh, I was really high on him. He gets the job done over uh, Connor Matthews and um, great win. Julio Arce finishes Herbert Burns and retires Herbert Burns because I believe he needs to be cut. He's not UFC material. He is the only man I can sit here and confidently, confidently say he does not have a chin. His chin is gone. He has lost three fights in a row via knockout. So he's definitely gone. Verna Genderoba gets a beautiful upset win against Lupi Godinez. In my breakdown, I pick Lupi Godinez. But as we started watching the fights and as we started calling the fights, I said, there's something Verna, man. And she, what she has is control. And she was going for it. She was going for it. I believe she won the first round with control. The second round... It could go either way, depending on how you were watching the fight and judging what was happening. I still say that it could be either a draw or maybe a loopy in the second round. And the third round, Verna Genderoba got her third and final takedown, assumed the position, and went for, I believe, almost three uh, sequence ending a rear naked choke attempts, piggybacks her way to a unanimous decision. And we just saw fight of the night so far. Knockout of the night so far. Nate the trade coming back from, you know, getting completely pieced up from Jamal Emmers. Jamal Emmers started strong. He started fast. He landed 10, you know, 11 unanswered head strikes. 
there's a nasty gash that opened up and laid landwehr on the left side of the temple. He was bleeding. You could see it, but I said, this is nothing new. We don't, we're not scared. I wanted no action on this fight because I was so emotionally invested, but I saw a dog. And when I see a dog, even what I say don't matter. And we took 1.2 units plus 280, and that paid off very well. So, yes, very good prelims. No bullshit calls. Judges are on point thus far. Shout out to the Atlantic City judges. Shout out for uh, for the integrity. I love it. I love the good decision for gender gender roba. I love everything so far. Out of Missy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of seven, we have uh, five knockouts thus far, which is incredible. I would say that is fantastic. So. The night is going good. I'm glad I decided to stream. And uh, f five out of seven knockouts in the prelims is not too bad. And we made some money as well. We threw units. Uh, this is the night that we were going to come back. This is the night that we felt good. Um, you know, getting back-to-back -back rapes. But as you can see, I'm logged in. Right here, we got $1,056. That's a good night so far at the prelims. We might throw a half a unit in a main event parlay, but we're done. We made our money. There's no reason to even, you know what I'm saying? We got next card. We got Brandon Allen next week. We're just going to ride this out. Nate the Train taking us home with a beautiful 1.2 unit for a 2.8 return. Love it, love it, love it. Gender Roba, we caught her at plus 150-some, so we, just, we got her there. I was gonna. I, I was. I was ready to drop her. Uh, drop at plus two hundred. So, on the screen, I have Yokin Buckley in the co-main event entering. He looks good. That's a fight that I'm waiting for. Vicente Luque versus Yokin Buckley in the co-main event. That's gonna be wonderful. We got Chidi Chidi Bang Bang making his debut at Walter Wade. Surprisingly, lots of love for the Skeletor. I don't buy it. I'm still gonna go with Chidi. Bill Algio versus Nelson. That's a dog fight. I already told you. We got my countryman, Ruzuboyev, versus Cedricus Dumas. I think that's going to be a good fight. We have Chris Whiteman potentially going for a massive upset or a retirement here, end of an error uh, against Bruno Silva, nine years young. I think he's, is he nine years younger? Let me see. I don't want to, don't, oh no, he is five years younger, so he's 34. Also not a young bug, but it is what it is. And we're going to finish off with the main event of Aaron Blanchfield. Can she keep... Her, uh, undef well, I don't want to say undefeated streak, but her f freaking phenomenal streak going here against this also undefeated in the UFC, Menon Fjord. I will tell you, Menon Fjord is a bigger girl, 10 years older, you know what I'm saying? She does have, you know, clean, precision striking, but if Erin Blanchfield gets her down, it is over. She has recovered. I'm watching her right now. She's entering. Her face looks back. She was extremely sucked out, guys. Watch her. She had a crazy weight cut. Her eyes were popping out. Erin um, Blanchfield, she looked good on the scale. She is the smaller girl here, uh, considerably. Three inches she's giving up. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good fight, but she's actually winning in the in the reach. So let's see what happens. It's going to be a good main event. Good live crowd from Atlantic City. Good energy for March 30th. Let's close this month on a positive note. Uh, let's forget the two weeks of hardship, of brutality that we've experienced, and let's enjoy UFC as we did. Always go with the with the positive attitude and um, never dwindle in the past. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint, and we got lots and lots of action for, for the rest of the, for the year. So don't overexert your budget, and I'm guilty as charged. I, I sometimes go reckless. But you know how we do. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it the right way. We're going to keep it the right way. If you're interested, by the way, March Madness going down. Clemson, Alabama, close game there. They're at halftime. Two minus 230, plus, one, plus 175 for Clemson. I, I was leaning Alabama, but I took no action because I told myself I will never divide my attention. If I'm playing UFC, I'm playing UFC. But there's a little bit of side March Madness in me that's going down. But. Yeah, shout out to those boys. It was a, it's gonna be a good game. Alabama came in for me in the last last uh, uh, upset win. 
How about that? That was awesome. Nelson came through. But in either case, we're just, what, about 10 minutes out of our first fight. Our first fight is scheduled for 10.05, 10.10-ish to start. We got 10 minutes to kill. I'm probably just going to go on a little break, get some water. You know what I'm saying? Use the bathroom. Stay with me, guys, because the first fight of the main card is going to be Chitty, Chitty, Bang, Bang, and Chikwani taking on Reese the Skeletor McKee. And we're going to go with Chitty, Chitty, Bang, Bang, debuting at Walter Wade by knockout. Half a unit play. And um, should I do it? Or should I just do the money line? I mean, he swings so hard. Chitty by knockout. Half a unit, man. I'm going with half a unit. Let's throw half a unit in this. Let's go. Let's go. We just threw half a unit. Let's go. I'll be back. Like this channel. Like this stream. I'm trying here. You know what I'm saying? So far, good energy, good fights. Hang out with me. I'll be right back. And um, yeah, I'll be right back very, very shortly. Let's get it.
Let's go. We are back. We are back. All right, we're just a few minutes away before the first fight of the main card. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang versus Reese McGee. Joachim Buckley versus Vicente Luque. So we have wagered, as you can see, $170. And we're our... And a thousand, so we're just all, more than more than eight units in profit. So that's good. We like that. We're gonna take that. We're gonna take that home. We're gonna take that home. We're gonna take that home right now. We're just gonna withdraw everything. Let's take that money home. Let's take that money home. Let's take that money home. Take everything. Take nine hundred seventy-five dollars home. That's a good night. So good night, guys. Leave a little bit in there. 0.3 units, you know. Consider that as a tip for them. One thing I say always, fuck the bookies. You know what I mean? Fuck the bookies. Look at Clemson. Look at Clemson. Oh, my goodness. Alabama. Close. Should we dare? Should we dare? Should we dare? Chitty. Oh, tough on this fight. So scared for. No. Luckily, Aaron. What is that? Twenty five dollars. Two eighty four. We need more. We need more. Let's go. Some lottery shit. Some lottery shit. Oh my god, look at that. By the way, boxing is on today. Oh, Romero versus Isaac Cruz. That's live? I gotta see it. I'm about to pull out on my phone. Romero versus Cruz. That's live, too. Damn, he's whipping his ass. If he's minus 1,100, he's whipping his ass. That's crazy. Nah, Clemson Plus, you know, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's stick to what we know. Let's stick to what we know. You know what I'm saying? Let's stick to what we know. All right, first fight is about to start. If you're new to this channel, make sure you like and subscribe. I just cashed out $975. I'm taking that home. We're done for the night in terms of uh, big boy plays. We had 1.2 on Nate the Train. We caught him plus 280, and we caught Verna Gender Robo plus 150. So good night so far for three-unit play in there. That, um, so we're good. We're good. We're fine. Um, time to get the money back. You know, we had a couple of rough two weeks. Uh, and now we're just going to be in the main event. You know what I'm saying? See what we can do here. We're just minutes away from the welterweight debut for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Love that name, man. Gotta love that name. Reese McGee, man. I mean, listen. How is he? He's the only way his, the, his only path to wait to win. His only path for victory is to weather the storm because Chitty looks absolutely dangerous in the first. Half a round to a round. And if you take him to deep waters, possibly get a takedown. Which Reese McGee is not really known for, right? We could be in of a surprise or not. But we really we already played Chitty half a unit for a knockout. So that's there. I might do a main main parlay. After Chitty. After Chitty. Let's see. There's a commercial going on, I think, for Atlantic City. <laughs> All right. Mm. 
if you're joining for the live play-by-play, make sure you drop a like. Give me a shout-out. We had a spectacular, spectacular prelim actions. Up units. Let's go. Two great wins. Back-to-back dog catches. Live, too. Made the train and Verna Gender Rover back-to-back. That's, that's awesome. Call those back-to-back. Let's get it. Red Bull is kicking in. Energy on massive, massive display right now. Let's go. I'm ready for some UFC, guys. Let's get it. Come on. Forget the commercials. Let's get it. Let's get it. The itching. Let's see. Who we got in the next fight? Who we taking? Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Reese McGee. Let's see where your heads are at. Chitty Bang Bang. Look at this guy, man. He is, bro, he's going to win. Let's put a money line play. 31 25. I'm putting everything in. I don't care. Come on. No way he's going to lose. He looks ripped as hell. He looks so big. Walter Wade. He's easily, he's easily, oh my God. Let's see what happens. One hundred and seventy pounds. How in the hell did she make that weight? How did he make that weight? That's crazy. Six foot three at thirty-five years of age. He's making one hundred and seventy pounds. All right, Bruce Buffer, baby, let's go. Man, AC is lit. Good audiences in attendance. Let's go. Walter Wade Division. See how that's going to go out. 30 second knockout. 30 second knockout. I'm taking, I'm taking Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, guys. I'll either be the smart guy or the dumb guy. Either way, it is what it is. Reese McGee is the first one to get introduced. So he's officially in there. Chitty looks calm. 22 wins, 10 losses, 1 no contest. 6 for 3, man. How did he make this weight? Huge, huge guy. Let's go. Keith P Peterson is going to be the third man in the octagon once again. I will say Skeletor looks good. All right. It's official fight. Shitty opens up with a leg kick. I don't want to blink. Let's see if Shitty retains his power of 170. Slow hook for Skeletor. Hmm. Okay, Skeletor goes for one two piece. Inside leg kick, Chitty. Let's see. Okay, Reese McGee is fighting back. At least he's not Tim. Uh, oh, he's throwing. One minute into the fight. Looks like Chitty trying to take those legs out. He's chopping trees. Already got nine out of nine for leg. Wow, Reese McGee's throwing. He's throwing, though. He's, he wants to fight. Ooh, Reese McGee going left, right to the head. 
Okay, Reese McGee is not fish out of water right now. Look at that. The lines went back to the pre-fight lines. Plus one, 12, Reese McGee. Chitty needs to unload his hands, man. He needs to unload his hands. He's eating a lot of punches for no reason. It's crazy. What the hell is wrong with him? He's eating punches left. 15 and 0. 15 unanswered head strikes. He's just throwing leg kicks. Reese McGee is boxing the living shit out of uh, Nchukwani. The lines are evened up. Maybe that's why. Some dirty boxing for Reese McGee. Some cl clinch control. Drags Chitty to the to the to the fence here. You know, don't tell me Reese McGee is about to look like Habib and just dominate the wrestling position. That's just gonna be like, come on. Chitty hasn't thrown a significant head strike. That's crazy. To me, that's crazy. It's like the polar opposites, right? Leg kicks to head strikes. But Reese McGee is now controlling 31 seconds of the fight. So, minus 156 for Reese McGee, plus 134 for Chitty. Oh my God, if he loses this fight to Reese McGee, cut him tonight. He's done. Cut him tonight, like cut him fast. That's just crazy. Maybe that's why there was a massive money dump on Reese McGee. Chitty was minus 230. At one point. Went all the way down to minus 140. Incredible. 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 We're watching Reese McGee controlling Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, that's just incredible, guys. Oh, my goodness. What the hell are we watching right now? Chitty's against the fence. He, he can't reverse Reese McGee. One minute, 52 seconds. Elbows. Ah, so freaking sad. What was the over in this fight? Over one and a half, I think. Chitty's back against the fence. The crowd is getting relentless. Or at least uneasy. Finally, come on, let's go. Keith Peterson separates the two fighters. Chitty in the middle. He hasn't thrown a single freaking hand strike. He's just leg kicking. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. All right. Round one, Reese McGee. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Observe, observe, observing, what, 17 head strikes. Fishing out 19 leg kicks. Five body shots. Control times for Reese McGee, but I'm going to give him the round for control time. Octagon control and aggression. Here's that value on Chitty right now if you think he's going to come out swinging. If he comes out swinging, he has a chance for a knockout. Two more rounds to go. Plus 164. Round two. Let's go.
A little more aggression for Chitty. Okay. He's going to have to get a little bit more loose. Maybe it's his debut. He doesn't want to lose. And he wants to play the smarter fighter. Possibly. Another clinch game. The crowd is getting relentless. They're booing every every clinch. Rightfully so. This is not how I expected this fight to go. That's crazy. Clinch game. Two, three minutes of control time for Reese McGee. And if you told me, if you told me this at the beginning of the fight, I would not believe you. I would not believe you. But he's doing it. He's controlling Chitty. Oh, look at Chitty. Beautiful elbow. Chitty's getting warmed up. Look at Chitty. Chitty turning the tables now. I think he warmed up. He warmed up a little bit. Reese McGee. Minus 190 for uh, Shitty. He was just plus money. We lost it. Yeah, we lost it. It's okay. <clears throat> 49 seconds. Ah. <sighs> Yo, they might even rob this. All right, let's just watch this fight. This is just not the fight that we wanted. A little bit of a lack, lack last year event. If you're, if you want to know what's going on, Reese McGee is just pressuring and putting Chitty against the fence. That's it. He's just pushing him against the fence. And every time Chidi turns around, Reese McGee turns him back around. And that's why look at the line drop. Massive drop. Massive drop, right? Massive drop. Look at the line. Look how crazy the line is. Minus 230 to minus 152. This is going to... It's 1-1. One, one. That's it. It's 1-1. One, one. If you guys are watching... It's 1-1. One, one. 
One apiece. It's 1-1. One, one. I got a 1-1. One, one. Close fight. Significant strikes. His favorite shitty. Um, Yeah, second round, Chidi opened up a little bit more. He was a bit more aggressive, striking more. Got six head strikes. So it's the leg and body work for Chidi uh, that's keeping him striking wise into this fight. Almost five minutes of control time for Reese McGee. And let's see if, let's see if, uh, all right, we're in round three now. Ooh, ooh, Chidi's striking. Let's see. He is the better striker. That is without a doubt. There's no doubt about that. And if he wants to win a boring fight, I guess, Chidi's going to be... He's striking. Minus 186, Chidi. Leg kick. Yeah, the leg kicks have been crazy, right? 27 leg kicks? That's crazy. Chidi cannot win a single, single exchange. That's crazy. It's interesting to know that besides 20 head strikes, which 17 came from the first round, nothing for Reese McGee. The line's closed. Minus 235, Chidi. Yeah, I agree. He's winning the fight. He's more active. Oh, look at the knees. Oh, look at the knees. A couple of knees for Reese McGee. Caught him. Minus 310. He's running away in this fight now. Looks like Reese McGee gassed out with all the control time. So, And now he's going to have to stand and fight. And look at Chitty now, warming up to every single strike. Nice. Nice. Oh, Chitty's going for a takedown. <laughs> oh, Chitty with a takedown. <laughs> he got it. I think he got it. But they're not credited him yet. And now it's Chitty trusting Reese McGee against the cage. Funny how he was a great plus value play. Damn, but I'm going to lose the knockout problem. I'll take the money line, I guess. Who knows? Maybe he can still knock him out. Oh, he touched him. He touched him. You got two and a half minutes to get a knockout. Come on, Chitty. There you go. Elbow. Reese McGee is having trouble standing up. Even as he pushes Chitty against the uh, fence, his legs are dead. All Chitty got to do is just push him. Like, just physically push him. Ah, brother. Chitty by decision. Go figure. Go figure. Over one and a half. Go figure. Keith Peterson breaks the clinch. No action. Good. One minute and 47 seconds. Come on, Chidi. Finish him. Finish him. Oh, my God. Oh, Reese McGee trying to go for a takedown. Gets the back of Chidi. Holy ma Yo. Chidi has no physical strength in pushing people off. That's... Oh, my God. <laughs> One minute to go, almost. Oh, my God. This is so boring. So boring. Reese McGee is desperately going for a takedown. And he's just fighting off. Chidi's fighting off, fighting off, fighting off. 
unanimous decision for Chidi, I guess, if he doesn't knock him out. He got 40 seconds to knock him out. Just fucking knock him out. He, and he could have. Oh, he caught him. Look, he caught him. He caught him. But he just doesn't follow up. Damn. He looks bad at 170. This is a bad debut for Chitty. It's going to be a massive fade next time. I don't know what's... Maybe he just wants a W. He just came in for a W. Not taking any chances. Spinning elbow. Bad performance for Chitty Bang Bang. Unanimous decision, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. He lost the first round, but he won the last two. 100% agree. I mean, you could just look. 20 head strikes, 23 body, 29 leg. All that control time, there were three separations with Keith, Keith Peterson. So, no significant action from Reese McGee. No, it doesn't matter. Unanimous decision for Chitty Bang Bang. Bad performance for Chitty, though. To go against such a low caliber fighter like Reese McGee. And I don't want to like continue, like, I don't want to just keep saying bad things about Reese McGee, but I don't think Reese McGee is a UFC caliber fighter. You know what I'm trying to say? But who am I to make those, you know, decisions? I, I just have opinions. I'm just a guy with a microphone on YouTube just talking shit, right? But if you ask me, he's not UFC caliber and Chitty is just, I don't know. He was landing the shots when he had it, and he's just not converting. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, first fight of the main event is in the books. In the books. That performance for Chitty Bang Bang. So he did fight at Walter Wade before. So this is a return to Walter Wade. Unanimous decision. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's look at the next fight. What's our next fight? Bill Algio versus Kyle Nelson. That should be fun. That should be fun. We should we should definitely keep an eye on Kyle Nelson. He's a dog. Kyle Nelson is a dog. Bill Algio minus two sixty. Kyle Nelson plus two fifteen. Come on, guys. Let's get this unanimous decision so we can move on. Come on. So nonsense. Nonsense. Why are they why are they taking so long? I hate this nonsense. It's a unanimous decision for, for Chidi and Jijukwani. Why are you taking so long? Why are you putting a bad blemish on this fight? There's a lot of money in this fight. That's why. I know that. A lot of money in this fight. Chidi was a huge plus dog. Somebody caught it. He won this fight. Give it to him. Do not even... Man. I hate these moments. I genuinely hate these moments. There should be an inv investigation in this bullshit. Come on. Zero for seven takedowns. No significant impact from six minutes and 41 minutes of control time. None whatsoever. Significant strikes for Chitty. What are we debating here? What is the debate about? Okay, Bruce Buffer is in the ring. If you tell me this is a robbery, I'm going to turn this shit off. Crazy. I'm going to be so upset. Don't do this, AC. Split decision. 
investigate the man who just who just picked Reese McGee. Saldi Amato. Finally. Okay, good. Kitty Bang Bang. Yes, Sal. Yes, Sal. Sal is your pal. Let's go. There's no way this was a split decision. There is no way this was a split decision. But justice is there. Thank God. Saudi Amara, man. Coming through for the righteousness. Investigate the man who just scored the fight for Reese McGee. Invest, investigate him. Test his MMA knowledge. Ask him what in the blue hell was he thinking. Investigate this man at once. This is madness. There is no way, there is no way anyone watching this fight in their right mind is scoring a single round for Reese McGee, except the first round. But even if you give him the first round, it's not a split decision win. Why do we keep doing this? This is blasphemy. I'm glad Chidi won. It was a, it was, he won split decision, but that's not a split decision win. That should have been a unanimous decision win. When you win two rounds to, to one, it's not a split decision. Investigate this man at once. Ugh, insane. I'm sorry. I get a work up sometimes for no reason. Let me just enjoy this fight. Unbelievable. All right, let's see the tail for the next fight. Free fight. Bill Algio coming in six foot three to five eleven. Thirty four years of age to thirty two, two inch reach advantage. Eating a lot of a lot of favored position on the significant. Look at that. He's almost two to. Yeah, he's doubling the rate. Six point one one significant sh uh, striking landed per minute. Over 3.46, so volume, 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 and volume. It's going to be the takedown average that might. Oh, let's see if Nelson can get this fight to the ground. If you can make it a dog fight. They're talking about Kayla Harrison on the screen. Olympic judo gold medalist, 2012 and 2016. Good for her. Judo world champion, 2010. Pan American Games. We had the pre fight for Bill Algio, Kyle Nelson. Drop your prediction. We're just stopping by for even for a minute. Drop down your prediction. Who you got? Who you got? Who you got? Who you got? UFC 300. April 13th. It's going down. It's going down. That's going to be a good fight. Shout out to the main event. Say what you want, Jamal Hill. That's going to be the pick. That's going to be the undefeated. Un I mean, sorry. It's not undefeated. It's going to be undisputed world light heavyweight champion. My boy. Jamal. Sweet dreams, Hill. Alex Pereira has no idea what's going to happen. He has been taken down by Israel Adesanya. You think he can get taken down by Jamal Hill? Although Jamal Hill, in his recent rants, promised to knock out Alex Pereira. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. All right, we're just moments away from the fight. Boring, boring, boring is the word to describe the last fight. We started off really well and a very, very sad performance by Chitty Bang Bang to start the main cards. Very sad. Split decision win. I will disagree. There was no, nothing split decision about that 
let me know if I'm wrong. Reese McGee did absolutely nothing to nothing to get a to get anyone picking him to win the fight. There should be an, a written explanation for, from every single for every single fight from every single ref on why they thought that person won the fight. Giving him even even giving him one round doesn't explain split decision. The hell are they doing? In any case, we're gonna hope that Bill Algio versus Kyle Nelson is gonna save the main card because it started rocky, guys. It started rocky. The prelims were exciting. Five out of seven ended in a knockout or TKO. So far, we're starting with a split decision, and it feels funny in my stomach. I don't like that feeling. Just don't like that feeling. But it is what it is. 10.45. The time on the East Coast. I got work early in the morning, but we're going to finish this broadcast no matter what. Because I want to know if Aaron Blanchfield is the real deal. I want to know if she has what it takes to be the champion. Because so far, so far she's doing everything she has to. So far she's doing everything that she needs to. She is going to be running into a much bigger volume striker like Minor Fjord. But it's going to be her wrestling game that's probably going to dictate the game. And if she imposes her will and takes down Minor Fjord, it's going to be, it's going to be a long night for Minor Fjord. And I think Erin Blanchfield is gonna it's gonna shine as the fight goes on. The over under is four and a half on that fight. So there's a projected projected. Let me see round yeah, four and a half. So it could be a long long night for Manon Fiot. She can take out Erin Blanchfield and give a little bit of room for Erin Blanchfield. To work her game, it's gonna be a long night. In either case, we're about to get into the next fight. Bill Algio, Senor Perfecto versus Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson has been a gift in the last couple of fights for me. Came through. If we want to see what they're doing. Pull that up real quick. I can pull that up. Kyle Nelson coming in with two wins back to back. He stopped the train of Bill Builder, Blake Builder, sorry. He took out Fernando Padilla in a decision, and that decision looks good concerning what Padilla just did. Alexander Hernandez and TJ Brown for Bill Algio. So two wins a piece. Two wins a piece. I don't particularly see a takedown here for Bill Algio because Kyle Nelson has a good takedown defense. And I think it's gonna if this the longer I, I would say this, the longer the fight goes, the long the, the much uh the better Kyle Nelson is gonna look. That, at least just my speculation here. He just he gets better as the fight progresses. Bill Algio is gonna have to implement the volume here. And early, Bill Algio has to start the fight fast and aggressive. Take the first round. Maybe cool off in the second if he's going for a decision and then ramp it up in the third. But if he wants to finish Kyle Nelson, he's going to have to take him down. He's going to have to take him down and possibly use his submission skills. As you can see, seven wins by submission for Senor Perfecto, which is almost 40% of his wins. 22% is only knockout. So he has that in his arsenal. But if we're looking for a finish for, for Bill Algio, we have to be favoring submission. The decision, seven decision wins, that's if 
he implements the long game. Kyle Nelson on the other side, the monster. Out of 15 victories, 5 wins by KO, TKO, so that's 33%. 4 submission wins, 27%. So can he get it done? I think it's a little bit of unlikely. Those submissions came early in his um, career. He is a good decision machine. His volume picks up. His power is, I, I don't want to say stagnant, but it's actually at a very good level. He maintains his striking ability all the way to the last round, to the last bell. Con Nelson is a dog. There is value on the dog play here. There is value. But I would say if you're going to go with a, you know, a, a play here, I would say look for the live play, which is what I'm thinking here. The reach is going to play the dividend. Mr. Rival here dropping a prop prediction. He's predicting Algeo by submission. He said, watch out, round two. I'm not hating that prediction. I'm not hating that at all. That is live. Method of victory. Bill Algeo by submission is plus 420. If we're going to call a method and round, Bill Algeo by submission round two is this unheard plus 1300, which is if you hit that, Mr. Viral, I will bow down to you, sir, right here live. That is going to be fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> that would be awesome. Can he get it done? Yes. We've seen. Higher percentage prop for Bill Algeo. Higher percentage prop for Kyle Nelson is the decision. In either case, they are both good striking uh, fighters, and they they got what it they but they both have what it takes. If you are watching, drop your predictions down below. I'd like to know where your head is at. We're just just minutes away from the fight. They actually are in the octagon. They're going to be introduced by Bruce, by, by Bruce Buffer here. And um, this is going to be, I believe, a much better fight than we just saw from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and the Skeletor. It's going to be a much better fight. So it's going to be Kyle Nelson right now being introduced. His body language, I, th I like it. He looks good. I said that he looks good on the scale. He looks like he's ready to roll here. We have Corey saying Algeo by decision. I'm not hating that. That's a good call. That is a good call. Algeo by decision is a good call and a respectful call. Absolutely. That means you're respecting Kyle Nelson and his durability. Bill Algeo is getting introduced now, and he is looking good. He looks much better. He's recovered. He's rehydrated. He looked absolutely awful on the scale. I watched, I watched the weigh-ins. He did not look good. He did not look good. He's all smiles. His face is back. Good rehydration for Algeo. We have to watch for the first round to see what's, what's going to happen. The fight is about to hit. Let's go. My stream is just a little behind from the live, but we're all behind. Let's go. Kyle Nelson opens up with a leg kick. Bill Algeo returns. Bill Algeo looks good. Oh, look at those leg kicks. Oh, they're going at it. They're going at it right from the beginning. I like that. I told you it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a much better fight. Whoa, look at this. Finally, we have a fight, guys. Oh, great counter for Bill Algeo. Great counter for Bill Algeo. He's looking good and crisp here. Already eight shots. Oh, Kyle Nelson. What a oh, Kyle Nelson. Oh, my God, Kyle Nelson. He's going at it. Teeing off right now. Kyle Nelson's teeing off right now. Wow. Dog. 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 Controlling. Plus 150. We got to lock back in. Are we looking for a potential dog now? Wow. Clinch control for Kyle Nelson. He started the fight strong. 
Did he get a knockdown? No, he didn't. They didn't give him a knockdown. But he's controlling the fight, and he's now he's now cruising with 36 seconds of control time. Can he keep it there? Nelson's looking very good right now, technical. Let's see. Let's not jump the gun here. Let's not jump the gun. Bill Algio is now catching breath. Good body work. Bill Algio in blue shorts. Kyle Nelson in black. One two piece combination strength for Bill Algio. He looks like he's he's recovered. He looks like he's recovered. Oh, nice, nice, nice. He just caught Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson is in this fight, though. The longer the fight goes, we have to favor Kyle Nelson a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Both men are going at it. Both men are going at it. Ooh, powerful. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a fight. Look at that spinning back kick by, by Algio. But Kyle Nelson is in here, guys. He's in here. This is a good fight so far. Strong start for Kyle Nelson. A rebound, second win for Bill Algio. It looks like he's recovered. The, state, the line is going up once again. Minus 220 Bill Algio. And he's back in the mix. Wow, what a beautiful head kick. Lines just closed up. About a minute and 30. What happened? Let's see. My line is closed. There is chance. The fans are in this fight. The fans are in this fight now. Woo! Kyle Nelson! He rocks Bill Algio! He's rocking him! He's old Nell! Oh! Oof! Barn burner! Kyle Nelson! Swinging! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, Bill Algio is busted up. He's in this fight, though. Oh, Kyle Nelson. I was just going to put it. Oh my God, Kyle Nelson is in this crazy. Oh, he's stopping it. The referee calls off the fight. Wow. TKO, standing TKO for Kyle Nelson. Wow. Wow, I almost put 250 on um, Kyle Nelson. Early stoppage? Anybody watching? Is that an early stoppage or was that, was that a justifiable stoppage? Was that an early stoppage or justifiable? Corey, you're in here, my man. Are you watching the fight? Was that an early stoppage or justifiable? I mean, he was hurt, but he was kind of standing, right? He was eating a lot, lots of shots here. Lots of shots were coming in. Lots of shots for Kyle Nelson. He was hurting him. Yes, he was. He was hurting him. Let me see. He's still standing. It was a fair stoppage. I understand. Um, that's why I'm not upset. The referee. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no wrong answer here because. I think the referee was looking out more for the fighter and he stopped the fight. So from protect Looks like there's some booing going on. Uh, you know, those that came in to see violence would have preferred to see a stoppage where there is no um there is no, I guess, controversy. You know what I'm saying? You could argue to I would be being. I, let me just take everything away. I think Kyle Nelson was was throwing lots of damage. He was throwing decisive sequence ending shots. But there was a moment where you saw an eye connection. You saw the eye connection, and even though he was getting rocked, Bill Algio, regardless regardless of those damaging shots, still was looking at 
Kyle Nelson. That means he's physically present. He's getting his ass kicked, but he's physically present. It was a fair stoppage, but could we have enjoyed a bit more? Yes. I like this referee, and I hate this referee at the same time. I haven't seen him before, but um, I like his style. You know what I mean? He's a little, he stops the fights like this. So if you're on the side that wants the fight to be stopped, you're definitely liking this referee. That referee is no joke. He'll take a point off right away, he'll, and he'll stop the fight right away. All right. Kyle Nelson, I told you guys, he is a dog. In my breakdown with my brother, we, you know, we were kind of like on the fence about this fight. I believe the, the fans in, in attendance, they, they don't like this stoppage. They don't like this stoppage. Okay, Michael Bisping is going to interview Kyle. Let me hear. Let me hear what he has to say. The crowd isn't happy for sure. Kyle Nelson is saying that if the fight wasn't going to be stopped, he would continue the onslaught. He would only get more confident as time goes by, and he would. Kyle Nelson is dropping a message 50 50 standard for the fathers in the maternity battles, I guess. Um. Yeah, I do believe him as well, Cordy. Co Corey, I'm sorry. Yes, I do believe him as well. He he was gaining more. And, and look, even prior to the fight, one thing I said, as the fight goes on, Kyle Nelson only gets stronger, and he maintains those that power. He never slows down. Yes, even if you don't stop that fight at that particular moment, what's happening? Only more damage to the fighter, only more swings, and it was just, I guess, a matter of time. Oh, wow. Need the train call out. I love it. I freaking love it. That would be a spectacular fight. Nile, Kyle Nelson, sorry. Not Kyle the Monster Nelson versus Nate the Train this summer. Make it happen. August, September. Make it happen, guys. That is a great call, and I support this call. Dana White, make this fight happen. That would be a spectacular fight. Agree with the, with the call. Kyle Nelson is now 3-3. In a row, and he's picking up the steam. Couple of fighters in attendance. Sean Brady in there. Obviously supporting the local crew. You know what I'm saying? Not hating that. Man, I almost jumped on Kyle Nelson live, but it just happened so fast. I didn't have time to even play that. I wanted to. I really did. I was itching. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. Sometimes a good play is a no play. Believe me. Sometimes a good play is a no play. If you're dropping by and you like what I'm saying, please give me a like and a follow. Subscribe to my channel. We are going to be, you know, clean, precise, and we are straight to the point. No nonsense. Calling it as it is. Even when I lose my bread, I tell you, this is what happened. UFC 300. We're just two weeks away. That's going to be beautiful. You know, a lot of us took a crap on that. You know what I'm saying? Fire that ref. Fire that ref. Mr. Viral, why do you say fire that ref? Why? Because he stopped the fight? Like I said, it could go both ways. You got to look at it from the referee's perspective. He ate how many shots? I want to say about 15 unanswered shots. And it wasn't jabs. Those were powerful haymaking shots. You know what I'm saying? Powerful swinging overhand power shots. Not jabs, and even jabs can knock you out, right? We're talking about powerful overhand. Algio was in the fight. He was standing in the fight. He was not returning a single hand strike. He was not blocking anything. There was no blocking going on. There was no nothing going on. Yes, he, he, he didn't get knocked out. It was a standing TKO. 
but you gotta understand from the referee side when when the ref when the fighter is just standing there and absorb absorbing damage, pure damage. How much longer do you want that to continue? Because one shot could be life or death. One shot could be a head bleed. You know what I'm saying? One shot could be permanent eye damage. One shot could be career ending shot. And if he if he's not answering, you know. Now in this case, in this case. In this case, I would say I would be okay with an early stoppage. I'm saying yes, but it's not like outrageous. You know what I'm saying? So I understand for those people that wanted the fight to go a little bit longer, who had some action with the fight going a, little, a bit longer, perhaps fighting fight starts round two. Totally understand the outrage about the stoppage, but this is not like, oh my God, super controversy. The man is fighting back and he stopped the fight. No, he ate about 10 to 15 unanswered powerful shots, overhand shots, straight. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to block or maybe change the position. But if you're standing there and you're swinging nonstop from every single punch, that's a bad visual. And you got to understand these, some of these, some of these referees, man, you know, they're very cautious. Like, this guy is very, he's very fast to stop the fight. I will agree. The, the entire night, he's stopping fights, er, like, right away. He's not giving a single split second for any damage. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's one of those nights where they're instructed to do so. You got to understand, it also has to do something with the local, you know, state athletic. Maybe New Jersey are like, yo, if the guy's getting his ass kicked, stop the fight. We don't want to see damage. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to see death. Again, it could be local. You know what I'm saying? It could be the local governing state athletic commission that instructed the referees to, you know, go about the fight a certain way. Notice in the second uh, groin strike uh, for Herbert Burns, he took one point, wasted no time. So there is that as well. There is that as well. But I understand your outrage, Mr. Viral. Hope you like the stream. Regardless, make sure you give me a like, subscribe. And I'm sorry if it didn't go your way. In either case, we must move on. We have my countryman, Ruzaboyev. Shout out to the country of Uzbekistan. Fighting Cedricus Dumas, who I like as well. I like both guys here. Obviously, the biased pick would be my countryman, Ruzaboyev. But do not count out Cedricus Dumas. He is a physical specimen. There is a play on DraftKings. At plus three and a half spread, where that is still a plus value money line. I mean, a plus money play, which could be something you might want to target. It could be. I'm not saying it should be. It could be. Something about Ruzaboyev, he's going to come in with great wrestling. He's going to come in with excellent power and striking. So if you're looking out for some props, you may be targeting a knockout or a submission. He's currently on an eight-fight eight fight winning streak, Ro Rosaboyev, that is, coming in with a spectacular knockout in the very first round against a very dangerous, hard-hitting Bruno Pereira. The same Bruno Pereira who knocked out uh, Robocop not too long ago. So that straight is very, very powerful. But again, it could be the physical difference between Rosaboyev and Pereira because Pereira was... Uh, a shorter person, much shorter person in stature. You got Cedricus Dumas, who's going to be up there with him, six foot two to six foot five, both very large middleweights, very, very large. The reach advantage, three inch reach advantage, is going to go to Cedricus Dumas. They're both coming in from the orthodox stance, 1.88 striking. I'm sorry, 1.88 striking differential for Dumas, 4.68 striking differential for Ruzaboyev. So you can see the significant difference over there. But I want you to pay attention to one thing right here. 11.69 takedown average. I'm going to say this once again. There is 11.69 takedown average to 0.7 Cedricus. Just by reading that line alone, I do not understand why the takedown Average of 11, almost 12, almost 12 takedowns with 100% takedown accuracy. How, how he is only minus 220. You know, I would price this fight at minus 300 for Ruzaboyev on the statistics alone. 
on the statistic on the statistics alone let's see uh some more percentages here so that finished was a boy right here I would say that 33 wins, you know, a lot of padding go to, going on. I would agree. There is a lot of padding going on for my fellow countrymen. If you are targeting a prop, most wins came from a submission. So you look at that takedown average. One plus one equals two. You look at the submission average of 61% of his wins. You look at the total submissions, 20, 11 knockouts, two decisions. There is a greater chance for a submission win for Ruzuboyev based on statistics alone. Based on statistics alone. If you look at his dancing partner, Cedricus, the Reaper, he's going to come in with 9 and 1 record. You know what I'm saying? With his last win against Abu Azaytar via a unanimous decision. Before that, he had a unanimous decision against Cody Brundage. He is fighting a lower caliber fights here. But he is winning. This loss against Josh Fram is bad. He lost to Josh Fram, who's not good at all himself. He's decent at best. He's not even moderate. Definitely not UFC caliber, in my opinion. And he lost via guillotine choke. So once again, considering the takedown average for Ruzuboyev and considering Cedricus lack of, you know what I'm saying, defensive ability if you will you have to understand that Rosaboyev can take him down even if he's losing striking advantage against uh Sudrikis, which again shouldn't happen but if it does it's gonna favor Rosaboyev all right only time will tell and we're just minutes away from the fight and all the speculation and everything we just set, set pre-fight will be dictated live if you're coming in, drop down your prediction for the fight. I will go completely transparent and tell you that, you know, Ruzaboyev is from the country of Uzbekistan, the land where I was born, from my country. So there is that. You know what I'm saying? But Cedricus, I got to tell you, he packs the physicality to, to fight with him. Ah. <sighs> I wonder if uh, so if Ruzaboyev is fasting. If he's fasting this month of Ram Ramadan, he is going to be a little bit of a at a disadvantage here. It tires you out. I will say that fasted all day today, and it's just draining. It took a whole cup of coffee and a whole Red Bull just to get me out. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in a fog. So good fight, great matchmaking. It's going to be the takedown that I'm going to be looking for Rosuboyev here as the difference maker. Oh, Corey's saying he is fasting. So that's something to consider, okay? That is that is very significant. If he is fasting, that is uh that is significant. That is significant. Especially f fasting for pr pr right before his fight. Ooh, I mean, there. How many? So he broke his fast around seven twenty-ish. You know, a couple of hours past three hours. He's been hydrating, I'm sure. I don't think he ate too much, but he definitely ate some carbs. I would be eating carbs if I were him. So, some fruits, some clean carbs. You know what I mean? Some fruits, some watermelon, hydrating. So let's see if that plays a dividend here. 30 years of age for Ruzaboyev, 28 for Cedricus Dumas, you know. You know you know what I'm saying? They're right there. They are the best physical shape at the best time of their lives. It's going to be if it's I think it's going to be a good fight, you know what I'm saying? Ruzaboyev has a lot to prove, you know, coming in with that first round like what? 15 I don't even know. He won really fast. What was the he won in the first round. It's very fast. It was like the first punch he threw. Bruno Ferrero. Oh, okay. One minute, 17 seconds. So it happened really fast. Let's see. Let's see. Any other predictions, guys? What are we feeling? Are we going with uh, Rizaboy for we're confident here 
Are we not confident here? Corey, hit me up. Let me know what's what's up. What's on your mind? Yeah, like I said, I my bias pick would be Rosa Boyv, but um minus 220 is, you know, it's it's the dicey area. It's a dicey area for me to even consider going that way. But I'm just gonna pick him to win. And I'm just gonna sit back. I am gonna take a missed opportunity on Kyle Nelson and say that I should have played Kyle Nelson. But again, I, it's fine. I'm just going to enjoy the fight. You know what I mean? That was a good fight. He came back strong. He was always pressuring. And he got the finishing sequence. Early stoppage, maybe. As we had a little bit of controversy, maybe. But it is what it is. We got the mid middleweight showdown on next. Ruzaboy, but not confident. Yeah, you see, I I, I sense the re reservation. And I will concur with the reservation. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being in the stream. That's a good, that's a good, that's a, that's where I'm sitting at. And again, I would also add my bias pick. It's a bias pick. It is what it is. Let's see. I do want him to be successful, though. He's going to be, a, I think, a much better prospect for my country than uh, Muradov, you know? Muradov, for my country, he had all the tools to make some noise. Um, he had some success, but uh, didn't deliver as much as I thought he would. Perhaps this guy could. It does scare me with eight losses, you know what I mean? But he's fighting a lot. <laughs> he's fighting a lot. 33 and 8, he's fighting a lot. And at, at 30 years of age, that's a substantial amount of fights that he's been in. Just consider for Cedricus Dumas, he's 9-1 and one at the age of 28. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. Let's get it. He seems like the better fighter, but we need to see it at this level. Absolutely, absolutely agree. This would be a really good t test right here. Okay. Bruce Buffer is officially introducing the blue corner. That's going to be Cedricus Dumas. I will tell you this. I will be keeping an, uh, a close live line on this fight. Because if something tells me to jump ship, and play Cedricus Dumas, I will not hesitate. But we would have to, you know, watch and see. Wait and see. Let's see what we got. 33 wins. Rosa Boyf is being officially introduced into this fight. Pre-fight lines, minus 230, plus 176. All right. Vitor Ribeiro is going to be referee. I haven't seen this guy. I haven't seen this referee. Let's see. And we're at it. Let's go. I hate the fact that we're like 10 seconds behind, right? The bookies are always ahead of us. Hate that shit. All right, two men are in the center. No one has thrown a punch yet. Thirty seconds. No one has throw a punch yet, nor nor a kick. I guess there's respect. There's great respect. The lines are closed, though. Let's see what happened. Oh, Rosa Boy would have won too. Connected once. Cedric is a swinging.
good stands for Rosaboyev. Rosaboyev looks good. Oh, he's punching so hard. Ooh, he's punching so hard. You could hear the the head strikes. Dumas is in this fight, though. He's not backing down. Hasn't backed up once. He's eating a lot. Seven unanswered head strikes for Ruzaboyev. There's a big chant from the crowd for New Sultan. He's standing tall. Hasn't level changed once. He's going for the uppercut. He's going for the finishing ending shot. Dumas is not backing down, but he's not doing anything. You know, he's just pushing off. Oof! Crazy overhand by uh, Ruzaboyev. Wow. Just this just this much, and he would have finished them just that much. That was a powerful overhand. Ooh, Ruzaboyev coming in with the uppercuts here. Ruzaboyev coming in with the uppercuts here. It's interesting that Cedric... Oh, Cedric is fires away. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, Ruzaboyev, it's over. It's over, just like that knockout. The man is real. Ruzaboyev is real, guys. That is a real dude. He's the real deal. He's real. Oh, my God, look at that blood. Oh, Oh, look at the eye. Ay, ay, ay. Let me see the replay. There's a bit of a conversation going on. Oh, a little bit of an eye poke. Oh. Oh, he was trying... Oh, he was... Oh, but he stopped. Why would he stop in the middle? He exposed himself. There was an eye poke. There was an eye poke, but the referee didn't stop or, or acknowledge it, and he let the fight go. And obviously, Ruzaboyev capitalized. He capitalized, and oh, it's the it's on the return. He, he oh. Can they reverse the call? Will the refer are they allowed to reverse the call? Oh no, they're not. They're gonna keep it. They're gonna keep it as a knockout. Rosaboyev, man, he's the real deal though. Even if they stop, I mean, if they stop the fight, he wouldn't like teed off on him, right? Because of the eye poke. But he is very powerful. And he has the killer instinct. That's the difference between uh, Ruzaboyev and Muradov. You know, he's he's a monster. He, like he's finishing fights. You you know what I'm saying? Like twenty submissions, eleven knockouts, or whatever knockouts he has, or ten knockouts. Like he's a finisher. So powerful, powerful dude. You got to give credit where credit is due. All right, so they brought, they're going to keep it as a TKO because the referee never stopped the fight. There was an eye poke, even on the replay. There was an eye poke, even on the replay. I will, I will agree. But you can't stop the fight. You got to move away. You can't just stop, like, in the middle of a fight. That's dangerous, right? You cannot stop in the middle of the fight. I don't care. You just can't.
If the referee doesn't stop the fight, you got to protect yourself at all, at all times, at all costs. Yep. All right, they're going to make it official. Knockout. Nur Sultan, that's it. He's a problem. All right, let me hear this guy. <laughs> he, <laughs> Rosie Boy put a official um uh, it's a, a official hat from the country on uh, Michael Bisbee. He looks hilarious. <laughs> it's called Doobie Taka for those of you who want to know. It's a funny looking hat, <laughs> but that's what we wear. Believe it or not, though, I don't know. I don't understand the word that he's saying. I've been in America for so long. I, I don't speak my native tongue. So if you're looking for me to translate, I'm waiting for the translator with you guys. Let's see what he said. He's obviously taking, he's thanking his team, so. So Michael Bisbing is referencing the eye poke here. Let's see what he says. But there is an eye poke. How far are you going to go in this organization? Gerald Mershard. He good call out. Bonus? Think he maybe called out for a bonus. He called out the entire Central Asian continent. Shout out. Shout out to everybody. It's so funny. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of a controversy. I would agree. A little bit of a controversy. But uh, you cannot stop mid-fight and not protect yourself. Let's. Do we agree on that? We, we have to agree on that. Was there an eye poke? We have to agree there was an eye poke. But was he out landing and out performing Cedricus Dumas? Yes. And if you look at the... Um, on the ending sequencing shots the powerful undercuts and the you know finishing intention from Ruza boy you can't take that as well uh, uh that as well so always protect yourself in a fight i don't care if the if the referee doesn't stop the fight or acknowledge oh your eye poke you cannot the uppercuts were nasty absolutely the uppercuts were nasty Corey. like you could you saw the intention of Finishing the fight. It wasn't just throwing, like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you 
fighters just have a tendency of just throwing an uppercut. This was more, you know, grabbing the head and just diving the head right into the uppercut. That was like pure intention to finish. So nasty performance. You cannot take that away from Ruzaboyev. And the call out for Mershard, that's a that's a splendid call out. So far, all the call, call outs have been on point. They have been fair. They haven't been anything outrageous. And I respect that. I absolutely respect that. And that's going to be a good fight uh, down the line. When is it going to happen? No idea. But when it does, it's going to be a good fight. And I reckon, I reckon Rosa Boy is going to be once again a favorite coming into this fight. Um, and it's a good call out because remember, it's actually Gerald Mershard who beat um, Muradov. So maybe he wants to avenge that for his fellow countrymen. A little bit of avenging going on. Good call out in either way. Uh, a knockout. A knockout. So we started rough with Chitty with a split decision. But once again, the knockout. Oh my goodness. The knockout is coming in. It's no longer Atlantic City. It's called the knockout TKO City. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven knockouts so far. Wow. Wow. And wow, wow, just wow. We are one, two, three. We are now in the last three fights of the night. We have Chris Weidman, the 39-year-old Chris Weidman taking on 34-year-old Bruno Silva. The two men who are known for striking, but also Chris Weidman has that wrestling. 4.4 significant strikes landed per minute for Bruno Silva. 2.98 for Chris Weidman. It's the 3.6 uh, takedown advantage versus 109 Bruno Silva. With a 43.43 uh, takedown accuracy. Let's hover over to topology. And look at a little bit of more of statistics. What do you guys think? If Chris Weidman loses tonight, he's going to retire, right? That's my that's my prediction. If Chris Chris Weidman loses tonight, he's going to officially retire. It's close to home. Good good place to retire. So let's look at Bruno Silva. Out of uh, 23 wins, he has 20 KOs. This man likes to finish his fights. 87% are knockouts. The submissions, he has no submissions. In fact, he lost seven times due to a submission. His submission is his threat. The wrestling will be Chris Weidman's advantage. He has three decision wins. Bruno Silver does not like decisions he does not like going to the judges he fights to finish or to be finished chris weidman as you can see 3l streak technical broken leg tko against uriah hall well this this doesn't count this was a grappling you know what i'm saying brad tavares unanimous decision loss and before that he won Amari Akhmedov. Let's look at his percentage. Out of 15 wins, he has won six of them by KO. He has lost six by KO. He has won four by submission. And he has won five by decision. So, obviously, the wrestling will come dividend. 85% of the topology MMA community has picked Bruno Silva to win. And if you are going to pick Bruno Silva to win, you have to pick him by KO. But if the durability of um, Chris Weidman is going to be on display, the fight to go to distance is plus 270. The fight does not go to distance is minus 280. So far, if you're looking how the night goes, the fight has the fights are going under. So... No, no surprise. Method of victory, Bruno Silva by KO, minus 110 is what everybody is projecting 
at this point. And the bookies are responding. And uh, Chris Weidman to win by submission, which would be uh, the kryptonite for Bruno Silva should he be taken down since he loses by submissions more often than not, plus 500. Plus 176 dog line, Chris Weidman, minus 210 for Bruno Silva. The official pick would be not to take any action in this fight because, well, I just have so much respect for Chris Weidman um, to, you know, really shit on him like that. But yeah, that's going to be the next fight. Chris Weidman versus Bruno Silva. Should be a good fight. A devastating KO would definitely send Chris Weidman to retirement. You know what I'm saying? And even if he loses a decision, I think this is a good time to, to call it quits. Drop down the comment down below if you agree with me. If Chris Weidman loses tonight, he should retire. I'm going to say yes. If Chris Weidman loses tonight, he should retire. It has been a good career. He has won several times by KO against the legendary Silva, the Spider Silva. And if he gets finished by Silva, another Silva here, that's Bruno Silva, he should call it quits. It will be a full circle fight. You know what I'm saying? Bruno Silva always comes out nasty, always comes out strong, always throwing powerful loops. Win or lose, he should retire, Corey. I'm not hating that as well. I'm not hating that as well. It would be nice to have someone of, you know, end of an era, Chris Weidman, because he that's, that would be an era, end, of, uh, end of an era, right? I, I remember it like yesterday. You know, I remember it like yesterday. He was fighting uh, Anderson Silva, and Anderson Silva was toying with him, you know, going like this, and, oh, look, I'm in the Matrix. And then Chris Weidman just catches him, bam, bam. Um, knocks him out and becomes the middleweight champion. Upsets Anderson Silva. Huge upset. They're showing some replays here. And you could tell Bruno Silva is he's going for the kill. He's going for the kill. It's going to be a good fight. Win or lose. I will agree with Corey. Win or lose. He should hang it up. He should definitely hang it up. Win or lose, hang it up. It's been great, Chris. It's been real, Chris. But man, leaving on a on a on a on a winning side is just fantastic. Not many get to do so. Not many retire with a winning uh, fight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not hating that prediction. But if you, man, I don't want to see Chris Wyman get knocked out tonight. I do not want to see him get knocked out. I I don't. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting emotional because it would be the end of an era. And I've been, you know, a fan for a long time. I've been watching UFC for a long time. But um, let's see. These refs should hang it up. To <laughs> <laughs> um, quest some questionable events, but man, you know, I think we kind of have to come to an understanding or at least acceptance that there's always going to be one fight or two that's going to have some questionable um, decision-making or refereeing, right? So, yeah, some of these refs should definitely hang it up. I agree. I will absolutely agree with you 100%. Yeah, I will agree. In either case... Uh, what when is the fight scheduled for? Eleven forty, so about a couple of minutes away from the fight. You know, that's true. That's true. Some refs are questionable, man. Some definitely some questionable. Definitely that missed eye poke. But again, you kind of have to blame the fighter as well. Cedric is Duma stopped the fight. You know what I mean? And then the early. Early stoppage, if you will, for Kyle Nelson. Again, when you're fighting, you got to defend yourself and absorbing 15 powerful shots, not jabs, but powerful shots should 
should raise a red flag for any referee. So not trying to defend any refs out here, but um, it is what it is. Bruno Silva is now in the ring. And here comes Chris Weidman. We get to see Chris Weidman's walk. I appreciate that. I didn't want to start this fight and have the both men in the octagon. Chris Weidman coming out with the American flag on his back. The All-American. Native of Long Island, you know what I mean? He's always been, always been repping Long Island. From Matt Serra Jiu-Jitsu, the All-American Chris Weidman is potentially making his last walk. He's potentially he's making his last walk. So I'm glad I'm live here. I'm glad we have a couple of guys here in the chat. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. I hope you subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you for keeping me company. It's, a gr it's been a good night, though. From four weeks of fuck... I'm sorry, two weeks of fuckery, right? From the Apex. Two weeks of fuckery. We have a good card. I didn't know. I came in with positive attitude that we're going to have a good night, and we, we've had a good night. It would be amazing if Chris White, Whiteman wins. What a, oh, he's coming in with uh, the Wonder Boy. He has Wonder Boy in his corner. Chris Weidman is coming in with Wonder Boy. Wow. Wow. Let's go. Maybe Wonder Boy has, you know, gave him some, some little tricks. Great guys. Both of them are great guys. Just, you know, in terms of overall, you know, attitude, Chris Weidman and Wonder Boy, man, that's good to see. I did not know that he was, uh, that he had Wonder Boy in his corner. I guess when you're preparing for a striking battle, right? Against the likes of Bruno Silva, you have to you have to come in with everything. You have to come in with the full cam, man. Got to be ready for everything. All right, we're going to transfer to the ESPN in progress line so we can watch the fight that way. I have the lines pulled up as well. Chris Whiteman is coming to start the pre-fight at plus 166 courtesy of uh FanDuel lines. Bruno Silva minus 198. We've had a successful night so far against uh, FanDuel. We hit that bookie for eight and a half units. Win or lose. I will agree with, uh, with one of the comments in the chats. Win or lose, he should hang it up. Corey, that was you, right? Win or lose, he should retire. Yes, I'm going to agree with you. Let's go. I'm ready, guys. Let's go. I'm nervous, guys. Who are we picking? Are we give me your official predictions? I mean, it's gonna be yo, imagine Chris Weidman can get that submission win. That'll be nasty. That seems to be the kryptonite for uh Bruno Silva, right? And let's see if Bruno Silva stays true and goes for the head knockout. Because I will be honest. Chris Weidman's chin is gone. He has been cracked. He has been cracked and cracked and cracked. Rear naked, rear naked. I mean, he's definitely the crowd favorite, Chris Weidman. Oh, look at these losses, man. This was nasty. The left cross at 205, which he had no business. Ronaldo Souza punches. Oh my goodness. Musasi took him out. UL took him out. How about that fight with Luke Rockhold? Chris Weidman, man, he's been battle tested for sure. Silva by TKO is my guess. And I will agree with you. I will not even rebuttal that. I will not even rebuttal that at all. By the way, shout out to your name <laughs> to your name, Long Dong Silver. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Welcome to Battle Cage. That is awesome. Make sure you give me a like on the stream, guys. Subscribe to my channel and let's get it. First round. Let's get it. Let's see who throws that first punch. Oh, it looks like Weidman engages. 
Weidman was the one who threw the first punch, but it is Bruno Silva who connects with the first punch. If I would, if I'm Weidman, I'm trying to take this fight down, level change right away. And it looks like he wants to. Looks like he wants to. Looks like he wants to. Ooh, he just got hit. Okay, no problem. He just got hit. Weidman is trying to pressure. Pressuring Silver against the cage. There's a big chant. Let's go, Weidman. A nice body kick for Silver here. Two kicks for Weidman. Oh, look at look at Weidman is striking. Oh my goodness, Weidman is going at it. Yo, Weidman with Wonder Boy, man. Weidman with Wonder Boy with the kicks, man. I saw that. Weidman is looking good so far. I don't want to jinx him. I do not want to jinx this fight. Ooh, massive knees to the head. Ooh, Weidman. Oh, look at that wrestling playing dividend. Look at that wrestling playing dividend here. The line's closed up. Weidman is looking good, man. Weidman is looking good. Two great knees to the head. Pressuring Silver now. A massive USA chant in Atlantic City now. Look at that level change. Great takedown. Look at Chris Weidman. Look at Chris Weidman grabbing the back. Wow, vintage, vintage. The dog of the night, Chris Weidman, the All-American. Yeah, that was good. So far, Silver is in a bit of a trouble here. He's very wise to keep the hands on the ground. Because he ate two knees. That's protecting him from the knees now against the head. Wait a minute. I think, I, oh no. Not at the head. Okay. Great, great start. Chris Weidman is now minus 132. He was just plus 168. I do not like betting veterans like that though. I'll be honest. I'll be very transparent. And that's why I stayed away. But he is looking fantastic. He is controlling Silva against the cage. He is striking. And he's looking good. And those leg kicks, I have to play. I have to say, I'm sorry. I'm going to credit Wonder Boy because you know what Wonder Boy is famous for. And for him to come out with those karate kicks, definitely, definitely pay, pay the dividend. Great control, minus 176. The odds are flipping now. Silva cannot get out of this uh, side control that Chris Weidman. Yeah, that's true. Great start. Great start for uh, Chris Weidman here. Fantastic start. He's now leading with 14 head strikes, five body shots, one leg kick, and almost two minutes of control time. His line has just went up to minus 176. And he is winning round one without a shadow of a doubt. Some leg kicks. Some leg kicks for Chris Weidman. Some knees to the legs. And he's just grinding out Silva. He's just grinding and, you know, listen, that's a good move. That's a good move. You win like this, hey, why not? Why not, right? I am sure that everyone in attendance bet Chris Whiteman live <laughs> in Atlantic City. That That is for sure because everybody was screaming his name. The dog of the night. Imagine. So far, he's looking clean and crisp. Clean and crisp. Great start. Great first round. I mean, three minutes of control time, outstriking Bruno Silva. You couldn't ask for a better start. You couldn't ask for a better start. Chris Weidman coming in, 
looking like the vintage Chris Weidman. We're going to go into the second round now. One round for Chris Weidman. Round two is on deck. And I'm not hating this fight. The fight is good. He's doing exactly what he needs to do to win this fight. He's doing exactly what he needs to do to, to win this fight. He started strong with the, with the kicks. He started strong with the control. And he gets the job done. Round one. That's good. Let's go into round two. Round one is good. Bruno Silva, one thing about him. When Bruno Silva is taken out of his element, and when Bruno Silva is, you know, and he's controlled, and he's limited with his power shots, he's out. He just he just gives up, in my opinion. In my opinion. All right. Round two. Let's go. Chris Weidman is starting the round with confidence. And he's jumping out ahead. Obviously. Oh, Bruno Silva just... Oh, massive strike. He just put down Chris Weidman, but he's up. He's up. He's up. 10-9 Weidman. Yo, if I'm Chris Weidman, just rinse and repeat. Get, get Silva to the cage and get him down and control the fight. Don't stand and strike, my man. Come on, Weidman. Don't stand and strike. Don't be stupid. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's, he's allowing Silva to throw. And every every punch that Silva throws is dangerous. Excuse me. Good leg kicks for Weidman. Oof, he got touched up. He got touched up. He's he's killing that leg, though. Weidman is killing that leg. He's kicking that leg. Ooh, crazy body shot for Silva. Silva is much better in this fight. Obviously, Chris Weidman hasn't thrown any level changes just yet. The lines are back to one minus one of two one out. 124. Oof! A little barrage. Silva is opening up with some barrage. Oh! Yo, he's connecting, guys. He's connecting. Bruno Silva is connecting now. Level change. Level change for uh, Weidman, but telegraphed. Telegraphed and stopped by Bruno Silva. Bruno Silva is, is much, much loose now. He's feeling the flow of the fight. Oof! Those here comes those punches, looping hard punches that he's known for, like wild, unorthodox looping punches for Bruno Silva. A body shot for Chris Weidman. He's put he pushing him down. Ooh, oh, there's an eye poke. Okay, there's an eye poke. But this ref is fast. This ref is fast. He responds right away. Accidental eye poke. Let me see when this happened. Yes, definitely an eye poke. The thumb. The thumb of Chris Weidman. Yes. Man, this ref is fast. See if the ref was on... Yeah, yeah. He, Bruno Silva is motioning for a towel to wipe his eye. Fair request. Smart request. Yep, that's fine. That's a fair request. If you get poked in the eye, the, the least you should get is a, is a towel. Good job. Okay, just a minute. Break and we're back at it. The referee keeps mentioning to Weidman, watch out for your reach. Beautiful body kick by Chris Weidman. Great counter. Chris Weidman is beautiful. He's he's good. He's he's countering. He's countering. Great counter so far. Not hating those counters. Oh, look at Chris Weidman. 
He's not afraid to stand with, with Bruno. Level change, good telegraph, very good. Nice sprawl. Bruno Silva did not allow Chris Wyman to go for the takedown. Stiff jab for Bruno. Oh, oh, look at Chris Wyman now. Beautiful left, beautiful left. Pressuring down, pressuring down. Great counter. Oh, oh, Bruno. Oh, oh. Oh my God, he got to be careful. Oh my God, I'm. This is a good fight so far. Shit, it's like you're waiting for a knockout at any given moment. It's like we're waiting for a knockout. They're boxing heavy. Chris Weidman still keeping his range. I think Bruno Silva is gassed. He's looking gassed. Bruno's. If I have to guess, I'm. I'm guessing Bruno Silva is gassed. Chris Weidman is winning the head strikes. 24 to 19. Ooh. Silva's jumping in again with overhand punches. Uh. More physical damage for Silva. Oh, my God. Oh, Chris Weidman. Wow. Good head movement for Chris Weidman. Great movement. Man, they're swinging. Wow, they're swinging. Chris Weidman is good. He's the best he's looked so far against a much dangerous fighter. Ooh, stiff left for Chris. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Chris Weidman. Oh, shit. Left, right. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> He is T. Oh, <laughs> that was a beautiful ending sequence. One, two, one, two. Bruno Silva returning. One, two. Bell rings. He sneaks one in, and then he holds him like, "Yo, I'm sorry, but I was I was in the zone." Oh my god, this is a good fight. This is a great fight we have, man. Wow. Wow. I literally got me all out of my seat, man. That's crazy. Bruno Silva is now plus 124. Chris Weidman is leading the dance with minus 158. Edging out the head strikes 43 to 28. He is busted up a bit. I would say that. Could it be 1-1? One, one? Uh, could it be 1-1 one, one right now? Bruno looked good, but he had some moments where he, he looked gassed. Six fight. Didn't expect this from all. Absolutely, my man. Absolutely. I mean, what a... He, this is the best Chris Weidman we've seen in a long time. This is the best Chris Weidman we've seen in a long time. Weidman is doing... He's, he's, doing, he's doing a good job. All right. Let's see if he can keep up. Just one more round. Just want one more round. And we're in the we're in the round now. 15, 15 seconds in. 15 seconds in. It needs to be updated for you guys. I'm sorry. You don't see it. Both men in the middle. Silva might need a finish. Absolutely agree. Another finger. Oh! Oh. Oh. The referee says he's they both reach so he won't be taking a point. Good ref. I like this ref. I like this ref a lot actually. Was it both, though? What is he talking about? Bruno threw a punch, though.
Oh, he did poke him. Whoa, this ref is good. This ref is good, guys. I don't care what you guys think. This ref is good. He, how the hell he saw that? I don't know. This is a good ref. He's not giving him the towel the second time. A warning for both fighters. Let's go. Oh. Chris Wyman is looking good, guys. A minute down in the fight. Chris is looking good. Oh, my God. I will agree with my guy Long Dong Silver here. Silva might need a finish. Weidman is winning in every single category. Head strikes, body, and leg. And it's significant. 48 to 35. 13 to 2. 21 to 0. Leg kicks. Three minutes of control time. Chris Weidman is on his way to win a unanimous decision in Atlantic City in one of the best performance so far. He has three minutes to ride out. The pressure from Bruno Silva, and he's going to win this fight. Three minutes to go. A significant swelling under the left eye of Chris Weidman. A beautiful right right now for Chris Weidman. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Oh! Oh! He's going to stop the fight, ref. And it's over. Chris Weidman wins by a knockout. Bruno Silva is protesting the eye poke. Nope. Not going to work. Not in Atlantic City. Not in Atlantic City, sir. Chris Weidman gets the job done. High fives, everybody. Let's go. Wow. Wow. The place just erupted. Bruno Silva is complaining about an eye poke. Bruno Silva is complaining about an eye poke. Why? Why are you complaining, man? You got two stoppages. Oh, he is so upset. Oh, my God. He's protesting heavy. I don't think so. It's. Let me see this. Oh, he got him. He got him in the eye. He got him bad. Oh, my God. He actually got him. He got him. Chris actually poked the shit out of him. Oh, he poked the shit out of him. He fucking did it, though. Oh, my God. He really poked the shit out of him. Oh, his hands were open. Oh, my God. He did it. Oh. Oh, my God. He was covering his eye. Two eye poke back to back. The story of the night. Back to back, guys. Oh my god. He fucking got him, though. He poked the shit out of him. Yeah, both eyes. <laughs> Why the been trading with John Jones? <laughs> I love you guys, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is... He has a... Yo, I, I don't care. This is much more evident than the Cedricus fight. But they're going to give it to Weidman. Damn. 
Damn. Oh my god, he really got him. Can they overturn? Can anybody comment? Are they able to overturn the stop? Do they have the power to overturn to a no contest? Or are they going to... That's the only way he wins is a no contest. But if they're going to score the fight... If they, if they point score the fight, Chris Weidman wins the, the points, right? I don't know. My man Weidman is holding out that monster can. If you hold a monster can, you usually win. For everyone checking in my stream, guys, like and subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you, man. Let's go. Let's get it. But that's crazy. Back-to-back -back eye pokes. Controversy. Controversy to the max. Controversy to the max, guys. Craziness is on full display. You can always count for some controversy and, and craziness. Gary Copeland stuff. Yeah, they're going to give it to Whiteman. TKO win, Chris Weidman. The old American Chris Weidman. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Of course, of course. Good, good. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm happy for Chris. <laughs> let me hear this. Let me hear this. Let's see. Is he going to retire? 39. He said you can't drop from an eye poke. But what if that shit hurts like a mother? What are you supposed to do if you get hit like a mother in the eye poke, right? Your, your instinct is to protect your eye. Yeah. Definitely. He's addressing his lead kicks. Chris Whiteman with a knockout win. That's crazy. Everybody's winning by a knockout. Everybody's winning with a knockout. That is beautiful. No, I'm sure he saw... I'm trying to see if he's going to, you see, he's not retiring. Beautiful message by Chris Weidman. He's not retiring. The man is not retiring. Uh, the old American Chris Wyman is not retiring. Shout out to the OG winning by a TKO with an asterisk. With an asterisk, if you will. But who gives a shit? He came out. Man, Wonder Boy? Wonder Boy was the secret sauce. When I saw Wonder Boy, I said, yo, he got Wonder Boy in his corner. He's going to be throwing leg kicks. And he came out throwing leg kicks. He came out throwing leg kicks. 17 out of 18 leg kicks connected. Three minutes of control time. He won the striking exchange. He beat on Silver. He poked him twice. The third time, it was probably uh, the ending of that. So three eye pokes, but he gets the job done and he finishes Bruno Silva. And I understand Silva. That was a, that was a significant eye poke. <laughs> Mr. Viral chimes, chimes in. <laughs> 
uh, this ref needs to be fire, fired, sending fight under his watch that ends in a fuckery a second time. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't know. I like this guy. I like this ref, though. We got Marab Divashvili on TV. But let's let's okay, let's address this. Let's take away let's take away the fuckery, right? Let's let's address the elephant in the in, in the in the room. Sometimes we have eye pokes and that happens, but he's right. You cannot stop the fight yourself. You can't just shell down and expect the referee to save you. He did that once and he got away with it. He's right. The second time he caught up to him and the fight wasn't stopped. And guess what? He he capitalized. Just like Ruza Boy, if he capitalized. I'm not mad about this win. I'm not mad. The whole time, he outstruck Bruno Silva. The whole time, he controlled Bruno Silva. And this is the best performance for Chris Weidman in a long time. In a long time. The last time he looked that... He didn't, he didn't even look that good against his win against Amaria Akhmedov. And I'll be totally transparent with you guys. Great win for Chris Weidman. I'm happy for him. What a dog. What a true dog. Still got it. 39 years of age. He came in and he looked so good. He came in and looked so good against a fighter that was projected to be an almost 2-1 to one favorite. So, let me see what he says. Um, he, was, he was the better fighter tonight for sure. Yeah, he looked clean. I don't care what you say. Yes, there were eye pokes. Yes, absolutely. Impressive. Yes, beautiful words to describe Chris Weidman's performance. Like I said, you can say all you want, but he did his thing. He did his thing. He did his thing, and I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it at all. Great, great performance for Chris Weidman. He gets the job done in an impressive fashion. Again, you could put the asterisk. You can do whatever you want, but it is what it is. And we move forward, guys. We move forward. We are now in the co-main event, and this should deliver as well. So far, we had a great night. So far, we had so many knockouts. I've lost count. One, two, three. So far, the entire main card is going knockout. Chitty, B, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang with a disappointing lackluster split decision win, which I disagree. It should have been a unanimous, but whatever. A lackluster performance. He should have had a knockout. I think he's a bum now. I don't care. I'm, I've lost my respect for Chitty. But Kyle Nelson gets it done. Put an asterisk maybe in the early stoppage. Ruzaboyev put an asterisk, perhaps an eye poke. Chris Weidman put an asterisk, perhaps an eye poke. But they're all going TKO, KO, and it is what it is. It's one of those nights, guys. It's one of those nights. You got to be impressed with the knockouts, though. If you called every fight with a knockout, holy shit. Imagine putting every fight to end in a knockout. Man, maybe we should have got the message after the prelims, right? How will the fight end? Knockout. How will the fight end? Knockout. How will the fight end? Knockout. If you put $100 on every, how will the fight end? You would have been, you would have been up so much. You probably would have buying. You would have bought yourself a ticket to Las Vegas right now. You would have been going. Let me see. How will the fight end? Knockout. <laughs> Imagine how will the fight end? Knockout. And the minute you take the knockout, it's gonna end in a freaking submission by a darsh choke for Vicente Luque. Right? Yeah. It is what it is. So let's review the next fight. We got Vicente. The silent assassin, uh, Luque versus Joaquin Newmansa Buckley. 32 years of age for Vicente Luque coming off a win against RDA. This is a Walter Wade 170. 5'11 to 5'10. Reach 76 to 70, 75.5 to 76. Striking differential 5.17 to 3.87 Joaquin Buckley. Striking accuracy favoring Vicente Luque, 56.04% to 35.556. Takedown, pretty much the same. The accuracy is going to be going to Vicente Luque. Let's look at their overall performance. 
co-main event, the silent assassin. He is uh, coming off a win, like I said, against RDA, which, which was good considering that he got knocked out in a devastating fashion from Jeff Neal that sent him into you know, a, a dangerous, dangerous injury. He had a head bleed. Um, but yeah, the community is going to be favoring Vicente. Look at 71% here. Joaquin Buckley with that super ninja knockout that he's famous for. So let's look at the finishing performance for Vicente Luque. Vicente Luque, out of his 22 wins, he is coming in with 11 knockouts. He's coming in with 8 submissions and 3 decisions. His kryptonite is decisions. He's losing his fights by decisions. It's really hard to finish Vicente Luque. You really have to finish Vicente Luque. I mean, put him out. You got to really, really finish him. So, so far, so good. Great, great performances in the past. Crazy finishes in the past. You know, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch. Joaquin Buckley, the over, overconfident, if you will. You know, there's a whole thing about him being, being kicked out from gyms because of his attitude. But say what you want. Out of 17 wins, 71% of them came from KO, TKO. 12 wins. He has no submissions and five decisions. If you look at his coming record, he's riding a two-win streak. A beautiful head kick knockout to Andre Fiao. That's when Andre Fiala was, you know, trying to make a name for himself, but he started getting knocked out. And a good unanimous decision went against Alex Morono, who's always in the fight. Excuse me. Say what you want. Alex Morono is always in the fight, and he's always showcasing his skills. So that's a good win. It showed patience and it showed growth for uh, Joaquin Buckley. He was finished by Chris Curtis, left cross to ground. And before that, he lost to a much bigger, much bigger person, Nusreddin Imovov, where I think he showed his skills. You know what I'm saying? So they both coming in here. Uh, the two stories, you know, on the polar opposites, you could argue Vicente Luque is on a decline or a possible resurgence. Depends how you see it personally. But it's hard to get back to the high level, especially after such a dangerous um, injury, right? Like a, a head bleed is not something you want to play with. And, you know, new Mansa, 29 years of age, one month shy of his birthday. He's about to peak. He's about to peak. And yes, he's getting finished and losing fights, but he's progressing. He's progressing. He's learning. So it's going to be a good fight. Vicente Luque could outstrike him because he's a, he might be the more precise and cleaner striker co into the, coming into this fight. You know, I think that the dangerous shots are going to be with Joaquin Buckley, and it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be his time to showcase. The pressure is definitely on Joaquin Buckley here. You know, Vicente is going to be confident in his skills, and he's always going to be patient. So. It's going to be a good fight, I suspect. Let's see, though. Let's see. They are showing the fight on TV, like, you know, the rolling B-rolls here. A little bit of B-roll for Vicente Luque. He's always been in the fights. Imagine he wins what I dar show, method of victory. Vicente by... Submission, plus 500. Thirteen first round finishes for Vicente Luque. Thirteen first round finishes. That's impressive. That is impressive. The silent assassin. Who's never been known to talk shit. He, he basically, he, he made a name for himself. In the, in the octagon. Never talked his way to a fight. Never, you know, tried to be that celebrity, social media influencer. He basically earned every single thing. 
And I think that's why we like him. And that's why there's a massive respect for um, for Vicente Luque. But say what you want. Joaquin Buckley is a dangerous guy. Always in great physical shape. And he, you know, I think I think his, men, his mental was probably his biggest thing. And he sounds more more down earth you know what i'm saying he was always flying high you know has buckley been tested on the ground good question i don't think so i don't think so i think imovov tried to take him down but buckley he 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 kept the fight at bay and he made it a stand up fight has he been really tested on the ground no he fought killers let me see actually let me go back that's a great question because if the fight goes to the ground, Vicente Luque, right? All the tools, all the tools, all the submission threats, everything. But the question is, will Vicente Luque be able to take him to the ground? You know what I'm saying? He, he shot against RDA off the rip. He went for the takedown and octagon control and, 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 and um, fence control. At the start of the fight, he wasted no time. Will he be able to do that to Buckley? That's the question. That is the question. And, it's, and let's let's see who. Um, let, let's really go into this. We have some time. He comes into the UFC. He fights Kevin Holland. Obviously, no ground. Impa Kansangane. He knocked him out. There was no ground. Jordan Wright. No ground. He lost to. Um, Alexei Dichiriko with a head kick, right? Karma. And then he beat uh, Arroyo. He beat... Ab I, I don't. Did Abdul Razak try to take him down? I don't remember this fight. I don't remember this fight. But Duryev tried to take him down. And he just couldn't. He stopped Duryev. He busted him up. Nasty, nasty swollen eye. And I took Buckley in that fight. And he was a dog. And I took him. And then obviously two L's that we described. No, I don't think he's been really, really tested. I don't think he's been really, really tested, but he's been always good with stuffing the takedowns and keeping the fight uh, in a striking dimension. So he hasn't been fully, fully tested. You know what I'm saying? Like it, he never fought a pure wrestler that wanted to take him down. And then you kind of say, well, what if, what if Luke is going to want to do that, right? What if Luke wants to do that? Especially what we saw in the RDA fight, because I told you, off the rip, he went for that takedown. In fact, we can pull that fight. We can pull that fight. Vicente Luque wins a unanimous decision against RDA. We can pull the stats on that fight. 12 minutes. 12 minutes of control time versus RDA. And that didn't happen by accident. He went for the, 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 um, the control as soon as it started. Eight out of eleven takedowns. So yeah, if he implements the same game plan against Joaquin Buckley, maybe that would be his first test. Maybe. I'm just. I just want to see this fight. Let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't bet money on this fight. Could go either way. Submission is a win uh, for Luke for sure. I think that is a true. There, you know that life. That live dar stroke, that live rear naked choke, is is there. It's always going to be there for Vicente Luque. That's what he's known for. He had two wins, dars, two dars wins back to back. You know what I'm trying to say? So, and he and he still has the striking. He still has the striking. And now that he fought once after his injury perhaps a little bit more confident coming into this fighting and perhaps he could get a little bit a little bit more looser you know what i'm saying cuz look at this he's he was he was doing some nasty remember that knockout against nico price that tko knockout he completely trashed him completely trashed him another eye stoppage so what does that tell you that that means both guys can can really really put on damage so yeah should be a good fight, guys. I think it's a rifle co-main event. I will be honest. I'm I'm edging Buckley. I picked him in my um 
in my fight breakdown picks and predictions with my brother i went i went i went buckley i think my brother picked luke so one of us will be right and one of us will be wrong in either case the fight is about to start i believe two men are now in the octagon so we didn't get the chance to see the walkouts because well commercials somebody got to pay the bills all right bruce buffer is in the center the co-main event of the evening. Three rounds. I agree with you, man. The thing, the best thing to do is just stay away from this fight from a betting perspective. Just, just watch the fight. Just watch the fight. And I will do that right now by taking my phone, logging out. So I'm logged out from DraftKings. And... Let's turn this guy off. Let's turn this phone off. Let's turn this shit off so I'm not tempted to play. Let's turn this let's turn this bad boy off. Let's turn this guy off. He's off. Let's enjoy this fight, guys. Let's take away the gambling out for a bit. Think he can take him down and control him. Again, that would be that would be evident in the first minute of the fight. Live betting Buckley if Luki looks like he did against Neil. That's what I'm talking about, Corey. I just, because I'm up right now, I don't want to lose units. So I will officially turn off my phone. <laughs> like it's off, guys. Even if my fingers are going to be itching, it's freaking off. But yes, I like the strategy both ways. You know, jump Buckley. I am leaning Buckley, like I said. But... You got to respect Vicente Luque. In either case, the fight is about to start. Let's get it. Buckley opens up right away. Counter for Vicente Luque. Let's go. Let's go. A little bit of field process going on. Inside leg kick for Luque. Mm. Luki looks good, right? He looks fast. Doesn't look timid as well. Mm. He doesn't look timid. Both men in the center. Luki is kicking more. He's three for three. Buckley's returning some leg kicks of his own. He's 2 for 2. Couple of head strikes for Buckley here. Yo, it's like dead silent. Dead silence in the in the arena. Buckley is looking clean with the with the hands. Very crisp. Very crisp. Mmm, Buckley's looking very crisp, guys. Excellent body, excellent striking stance. Hands up. And when he shoots with his striking, he's throwing volume. And he's throwing powerful shots. Both men are striking hard. Luki is not timid. Hasn't 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 shot for a takedown once. No level change. He's striking with Buckley, but Buckley is he's bringing the fight, guys. Buckley is bringing the fight. The lines have closed. 
two minutes. Lines have evened out. Buckley lost his plus value. It's it's a pick and fight now. And I agree. Oh, he heard Luke. Oh shit. He said, get up. He said, get up. Jump, jump Buckley if you have to. I would probably jump Bunkley right now. Minus 130 for Buckley. He's controlling the fight physically. He's just a bat he's just a tad faster too. The speed is evident here. The lines have flipped. Minus 130 for Buckley. Excuse me. And he's pressuring Luke. A. Minus 148. Corey, here's your life opportunity. Did you did you do it? Did you jump in? Oh, Buckley tripped up. Excuse me. Under a minute to go. Round one, Buckley, so far. Not yet. Minus 168, Corey. What are you looking for? More data? You're right, though, bro. It's a fight, man. It's so dangerous. That's why I turned off my phone. I don't want to be tempted. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be tempted. It's still off. That's why I turned it off. Cause... But Buckley is really handling it right now. Oh, here's that Here's that level change for uh, Vicente. Smart on you to wait, right? Minus 182 Buckley. I think round one is Buckley, guys. What do you guys think? Round one Buckley for sure. For sure, round, round one Buckley. I think so. That's why the lines have responded as well. Well, there was your takedown attempt for, uh, for uh, Vicente. He didn't, he didn't get scored for it, though. He didn't get the takedown. He didn't get the takedown. I mean, he went for it, but 0 for 1 officially. <sighs> yeah. Buckley first round, I agree with you. I definitely agree on that. I think so. He had more devastating shots, more significant uh, sequence-ending shots. 7 to five head shots, body, same thing. You know, leg kicks are really, really close. So, got to give it a Buckley here. Round two, let's go. Let's go. I just hate being behind the books. You know what I'm saying? The books are always 15 seconds ahead of you life. Hate that shit. It's like, not only are you watching live, but you're watching behind, so... Kind of have to predict. I agree. I agree. Buckley opening up with some body blows. Some body work to... um. Oh, look at that flying knee. Ooh. Look at that flying knee by Buckley, man. He is super athletic, guys. Super athletic. Let's see if Asante Luki responds in the second round. He's definitely getting outstruck. And now it's evident. Oof, look at those body blows. Look at that head strike. Man. Buckley's going for the finish, guys. Vicente Luque hasn't shown a single desire to take this fight down unless unless it's like on a on a reverse. He hasn't level changed. He wants to strike with Buckley. And he's getting he's getting outworked a little bit.
some leg kicks for Buckley here. Ooh, he just ate two pieces. Buckley is swinging for the fences. Oh, my God. Did you guys see that load? Wow. He went for the kill. Vicente ate it, though. He didn't even, like... He didn't even... He showed nothing, though. Damn, he ate that punch. Buckley went for a powerful, powerful hook. Oh, here's a level change. Oh, but he takes he takes him down in the guard. And he, and Buckley's going to he's going to beat him right now. He's going to pummel him right now. He's going to ground and pound right now. He's going to ground and pound him right now. Big mistake for Vicente Luque. Big big mistake. Massive blows for Buckley. My goodness, massive, massive unanswered shots ground and pound he is unloading he is unloading on um on vicente it's keith peterson in the ring right so he's gonna let him fight the other ref would have stopped the fight already keith peterson is gonna allow vicente to fight oh he's looking for it he's looking for the stoppage he's gonna call it done buckley done it's his time it's his time Oh, he is so emotional. I love that for Buckley. I love that for Buckley. I love that win for Buckley, guys. Joaquin Buckley with a TKO. I love that for Buckley. I love that win. That was, that was stupid by Vicente. For pulling guard against a man that was going for your head? If against someone that was going for your head? Nah, that's stupid, guys. But I love that win. Joaquin Buckley. Corey, that was the... I told you, he was running away with the striking. If you needed any live inclination, that was it. Buckley. Wow. 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 Great fight. Great finish. Another TKO. He is on the map. He just beat a ranked fighter. He just beat a ranked fighter. What was he number? Vicente Luque was number 11. He just beat an 11. Joaquin Buckley is a ranked Walter Wade fighter, guys. That was huge. That was huge. That was notable. I am so happy for Joaquin Buckley, man. You know, all the bad rep that he got, I understand. I recognize it. But he is a problem, and I agree. He is a problem, and I agree. You know, he, he's a problem for sure. He's physically gifted. He is super athletic. He packs a lot of power. All he needs to do is really hone down that wrestling because, you know, there are a couple of people in there that might give him some problems. But Joaquin Buckley is on the rise. What a great finish against Vicente Luque. Vicente Luque, terrible mistake. Terrible mistake. We can agree to that. Let's queue up the next fight soon, but let me hear let me hear what he's gonna have to say. Terrible performance for Luke. Terrible. Let me let me hear Michael Bisbing. Yep. 
ranked opponent. <laughs> yeah. That was great defense from Buckley. That's true. Michael Bisbing acknowledges his growth. <laughs> I love that by by him. Good win. He's right. Buckley is right. There is no running now, right? Like he's up there. He's ranked. He's gonna take his place. He's gonna be number eleven, rightfully so. And Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Sean Brady, Gilbert Burns, all possible names now. All possible names. Michael Venom Page is a ranked fighter, guys. He's a ranked fighter. That could be a potential fight. Neil Magny, I mean, he got ranked people now. But if he's going forward, if he's going forward, he got Sean Brady, Tom, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and Gilbert Burns. I don't know if Ian... I think Ian Gary doesn't. Ian Gary is not gonna fight him. He's not gonna fight him. Ian is looking for a much bigger fight. Ian's looking for Colby. So make that fight. Make that fight for Ian. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be shouting out that fight from the top of my lungs. Make that fight. Ian Gary versus Colby. But for Buckley, he has options. Buckley has options right now. He has Jeff Neal. He has Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and he has Sean Brady. He even has Gilbert Burns. If he's going to be on a trajectory of taking out legends, he has options. And they are Jeff Neal. He has Thompson. He has Burns, who's always been there. He's, he has options. And believe me when I say this, if they ever make Jack Della Maddalena fight uh, uh, freaking Buckley, that's going to be fireworks. That's going to be beautiful. Obviously, the top three are absolute monsters at Walter Wade. Absolute monsters. You know, he's definitely not being Leon Edwards. I'll tell you that much. He's not beating Leon tomorrow. But, you know, and I don't think he's ready for Camaro. Camaro's wrestling is, you know, he's up there. Like, up, up, up there. Bilal Muhammad is probably going to give him so much trouble. And Shafka, those three are monsters. Colby Covington is not number four. He does not belong in number four. Colby Covington is not even top 10. Colby Covington loses to everybody in the top 10. Maybe Jeff Neal, he has a chance. Or Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Because Colby Covington likes to fight aging, aging fighters. He is not top four. And if you think I'm crazy, let me know if I'm crazy. But feed him to Ian Gary. That would be a good fight for Ian Gary. Um, Cause he, Ian Gary, has been progressive, progressing the right way. And although we're making fun of him, and calling him a cock or whatever, and call him a dumbass, I don't care about his personal life. I care about what he does in the ring. So as a fighter, feed Ian Gary 
and I, I won't say Machado. I hate using his middle name because I know where he got that from. But feed, feed Ian Gary, Colby Covington. With that being said, Buckley now has options, and it's going to be great fights from now on. It's going to be good paycheck, and they fucked around and gave him a ranking, like he said. And guess what, guys? It's one. I mean, so it's twelve forty-five in the morning. I'm still going. I want to thank. Everyone who's been commenting, Corey, true MVP, Long Dong Silver, true MVP. You guys are here with me, uh, watching fights, commenting. You guys are amazing. Now, only only reason Colby is still in the UFC is because he knows how to sell a fight. He and he and being exactly, exactly, exactly. He's he's just a man who likes to talk and he does it very well. He's a Walter Wade Conor McGregor. You know what I'm trying to say? Although I have to give credit Conor when 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 Conor was hungry, he was he was beating people. Like he was violating. So whereas Colby Covington, you're right, he sold every fight. He he did his his promotional the way he, the, his gift on the mic is, is 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 fantastic. He really does sell fights. So but it's going to be interesting now, a big shakeup in a um, Walter Wade division. Some some rockiness in the Walter Wade division. Were there any other implications from the from the fights? While well, we have the the fight pending, the main event. Um, I mean, we got a new new middleweight, uh, light heavyweight, right? Uh, Ibo Aslan, but he's a suspect. He has he's a suspect, guys. Dennis Bazukia is now making some head waves. Nate the Train, Nate the Train, with a very fantastic performance, a beautiful performance. Um, Ruzaboyev, Ruzaboyev is on the map, by guys, a middleweight, a middleweight. That is a true middleweight. Um, there are a couple of fighters in the middleweight that would be a fantastic fight uh, for the ranking, but I don't know if he's going to be taking a t top fifteen anytime soon. Uh, but he's definitely on the rise, Ruzaboyev. Gotta gotta give gotta give my guy some respect. You know what I'm saying? How about the middleweight Chris Weidman? Wow, wait a minute. How about that? How do you guys feel about Ruzaboyev fighting Weidman? That would not be fair, right? Giving uh Ruzaboyev a legend. What do you guys think about that? A little bit of matchmaking right now. Weidman coming off of a you know, spectacular TKO. Rizaboyev coming in with a uh, spectacular TKO. Yeah, that's a good fight to make. What do you guys think? That's a good fight to make. Definitely. So those are his outstanding performances so far. Obviously, Buckley would have standout performance. And... We are now in the main event of the evening. I hear music. Why not Weidman was looking 10 years younger? Hell yeah. Why not? Why not? Exper experienced veteran. A standout performance. A knockout performance against a, a rising you know, contender. That would be a good fight to make. That would be a fantastic fight to make. Absolutely. I like that matchmaking. Love it. And it's Menafiot, the French woman. I don't know her pronouns. I'm just going to assume here. 34 years of age, a.k.a. the monster. Six for six in the UFC. She's 10 years older than her opponent, Erin Blanchfield. She's giving up one inch reach, but she's edging out three inches of height. When was the last time we had a fight like with so many knockouts? This is incredible. One. Wait, did they change the ruling on this? On topology, it says 
unanimous technical. Oh, they changed the ruling on this, guys. Holy shit. <laughs> they changed the ruling for Chris Weidman as a unanimous technical. They took away the knockout. What if you bet knockout? Did you did you have to give up your money or did or they voided the tickets? Wow, I told you guys. That is so funny. I said if the, they could they can actually rule the fight in a, as a technical decision cuz like to stop the fight at the at the ending sequence and he still loses the fight. Cuz I think Bruno Silva protested it and he had the right to protest, he still lost the fight. That is amazing. I originally ruled a knockout for Chris Weidman and it's changed uh, a ruling of a technical. Wow. Wow, guys. That is that is funny. So look at that. Weidman wins by unanimous. And I, I agree. Corey is on the Blanchfield side with praying hands going up. I feel you, my man. I feel you. Seventy-eight percent are gonna go with you. Seventy-eight percent for Aaron Blanchfield, the cold-blooded. I love the nickname, by the way. So the cold-blooded is gonna be next to make. Look at that picture. Yo, Loki, she's kind of hot, right? I'm not crazy. Like Loki, she's kind of cute. I would do it. Know what I mean? Two wins by knockout, four submissions, six decisions. It's coming out to that nice music. I like it, like it, like it. <laughs> like this stream just because we want to hit <laughs> Aaron Blanchfield in a nice way, you know? Hit that in a nice way. But yeah, she, she kind of cute, bro. She kind of cute, you know, low key. Got a nice smile. I like that. Minofio looks looked absolutely sucked out and dry. Her eyes were popping out on the scale. Erin Blanchfield looked like normal. Didn't look dehydrated. She's going to be edging out a 2.86 takedown advantage. Slightly giving up in the striking advantage to Minofiot. She throws in volume. Minofiot. But all 11 and 1. Look at that picture, huh? Look at that picture. She's definitely a beast. Look at that picture. Look at that. Six knockouts. Dangerous fighter. No submissions. Five decisions. Her last fight against Rose Nama Yunus, she edged out a unanimous decision. Beat a, a decision machine, Caitlin Sermonara, formerly... Caitlin Kokagan, Jennifer Maya, Myra Buena Silva, Tabitha Ricci, Victoria Leonardo. Really, really good work. Really good work. A lot of good work. All her knockouts in the past happened, obviously, before the UFC. The UFC caliber fighters have given her some problems. So, some decisions in her one, two, three, four. Four fights. In the last four fights, her last knockout was a TKO to Tabitha Ricci. Standing TKO. All right. So we kind of touched base on all the metrics and statistics. Erin Blanchfield is now in the ring. Edging out a, a decade of youth. The Beast, Thirot, she looks ready. Pacing back and forth, back and forth. Erin Blanchfield is looking good, confident. She is currently riding a minus 196 favorite projected line, and Manafiorot is at plus 164. Are we going for the decision here or another finish? Will the fight go to distance plus yes, 102? Will the fight go to distance minus 128? 
<laughs> yeah, no action for me on this fight, guys. I'd I rather take the money home tonight. I'll take the money home. You know what I mean? I did good. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the money. I wanna keep the money. Buckley live play would have been a good one. I feel you. I feel you, man. I feel you. But when you got a main event, you gotta watch the main event. You feel me? Like you don't have a choice at this point. You gotta watch it. Gender Robo and Lupi Godinez was a fun, fun uh, W MMA fight. Oh yeah, that's exactly why I'm watching it. Her well roundness is is evident. Yeah, definitely. She is, de man, she's one of the best well-rounded fighters. And when she's going for that takedown, it's on full display. So Menon Frio is number three ranked, huh? She is number three. This is a title eliminator fight, though. Number two, Aaron Blanchfield. This is a title eliminator. So there is implications of this fight. So we're going to watch it. We're definitely going to watch it. Cold-blooded. Blanchfield. All right. There are formally and officially introduced by Bruce Buffer. Let's go. Menoff, y'all. And we are Ralph. Let's go. Menon Ferrar opening up clean. Already showing her striking the French on display already. A USA chant for Aaron Blanfield. If Menon Farad cannot, I'm sorry, if, if uh, Aaron Blanfield doesn't take this fight to the ground, it's going to be a long night for her. It's going to be a long night for her. We have to see. We have to see if she can get the fight to the ground. We have to wait for the first level change. Wow. Manon Farad won for a, a, a takedown. Dropped Aaron Blanchfield. Aaron Blanchfield went into a guillotine. Oh, she's is I don't think it's deep enough. No pun intended. She got the neck of Manon Fraud, but it's not it's not well, it's not like there, but who knows? All right, they separate.
Menon Farod is definitely outlanding Aaron Blanchfield, and Aaron Blanchfield does not know how to stop the striking. Besides that possible neck crank that she had, I'm going to give the first round to Menon Farad. She's definitely outlanding. Yeah, she's getting hit, guys. She's getting smacked up like there's no tomorrow. 22-11. She is striking the shit out of her. Around one minute for rod. Blanchfield has pillow hands. She can grab. She can control. But she is getting smacked. Oh, look at Blanchfield. Manon Ferrara is much stronger, much stronger. Manon Ferrara is just so much stronger, guys. Oh! Oh, she smacked her at the end. What do you guys have? What do you guys have? I have round one for Manon Farah. And you have to accept that because the line for Erin Blanchfield is now... Minus 136. It was minus 200 at the beginning of the fight. Look at that slam. But Blanchfield caught that neck. Not me. Minot Farad. Yeah, round one. I'm looking for a little bit better value for Aaron. Twenty five head strikes to seventeen. Ten nine round one. Well, that's a yeah, that's exactly what happened. Let's see if Aaron Blanchfield can answer the the urgency here. Minus 124. Looks like the public perception is running on Menon Farad. She's throwing much more cleaner strikes here. Oof. Oh, look at that. Menon Farad reversed that takedown. Yo, we're going to go with Blanchfield, man. Minus 118. 
if Aaron survives round two and continues the pressure, she might break down Manon Farad. All she has to do is break down Manon Farad. She hasn't, she's, it's a much better round. Erin Blanchfield is fighting with a sense of urgency in the second round. Two minutes in. She's bringing the business to Farod. And although she's getting countered on the, on the entries, she's fighting. Much better round for Erin Blanchfield. I think she's winning the round so far. Because she definitely is closing the gap much better with the striking. A nice leg kick for Farad. Look at that. Her distance management is just stupendous. Oh, she keeps walking in with some punches. She's having trouble with the distance management. Close fight. Close fight. Erin is definitely having trouble with distance management. Fanona's look a little tired. She is. She is, my friend. She is. Can she keep it up? That's the question. I think Erin can go the long distance play here. Erin Blanchard can go, can go all the way. And if she gets her tired and then starts taking her down, then Fanon will be in trouble. Manon Farah does not look good in the third round. She looks good in the first, the first, the first and the, the first and the second. She's getting a little bit ahead of the striking. She's countering well. Aaron Blanchfield is now, for the first time, a plus 104 underdog position odds. Man, she's, she's definitely piecing the fuck out of Aaron Blanchfield, though. Like, you cannot deny that fact, right? She is piecing the fuck out of her. Plus 128 for Erin Blanchfield. Damn, she's fucking her up. Excuse my language. She has no answer, Blanchfield, so far. Plus 136 already. She's having so much problems. Every time she comes in for a close gap, she gets countered. She gets lit up. She needs to hurt M Manon Farad. Like, she needs to physically hurt her. She already developed a, a little mouse on top of her head. Some swelling going on. Because she's definitely eating punches like it's free buffet right now. Excellent distance management from a non-fraud. Excellent. She's, she's a good striker. And Aaron, Aaron Blanchfield just realized her first uh, underdog position at plus 158. And she's if she can't finish, I mean, if she can't close the distance right now, She's going to lose this fight just based on striking differential. The corner, the corner for Farad is encouraging the same the same story. If it ain't broken, don't don't fix it, right? They say. Round three, let's go. Fight.
This is the third round. She needs to make it dirty. If Erin Blanchfield is going to want... If she wants to fight the striking game, she needs to make it dirty. Oh my God, she's... She just got pushed off by Manon Farrell like she doesn't even belong there. But not yeah, Farrell is just a physical, physical girl. So much strength. So much bigger, man. And her striking is just piecing her shit out of Blanchfield. Plus 170 for Aaron. She is now... She's, she's behind. She is so behind. She's on the verge of losing this round now. She needs to win this round at least. Man, that's crazy. Yo, the story of this fight is Manon Fraud is just hooking power shots against Aaron and she's winning. Somehow. She 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 able to? The question is, can she get her down? Man, it's over for her. I think it's done. <laughs> Plus 300 for Aaron Blanchfield. She's losing this fight. She's not going to win this way. She cannot stand and strike. She cannot stand and strike. She can't get her down. And she can't strike. She's eating every single punch on the on the entry. She's eating every single right hook from Manon Farad. Oh! Aaron is leaking now. Bad visual. Damn. She's so much stronger. So much stronger. It's you can see that. She's she's if this was a third three round fight, she lost. She's down 3 0. She needs a finish. And now Blanchfield is looking more tired. Ferrot is, is straight. Good distance management. Good leg kick right now. The striking differential is about 20 punches, 20 significant strikings to the head. 60, 60, 46. That's 20 significant. Some body work for Blanchfield, but her head is just, it's like a piñata. It's kind of sad to watch, right? A lot of hope for Blanchfield. The strength, I think that there's a massive strength disparity. Blanchfield is very tough, but Firat, man. Menon Firat. So, number three, she's going to fight Alexa Grasso, or the winner of Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko. She's going to fight the winner of that fight, right? Menon Firat. 
so much stronger. And I don't even want to watch this fight anymore, man. I'm sad. Because it's like a beatdown. The corner of Manon Farad is, you know, commending her for her work. And uh, yeah, she's doing a good job. Uh, we're now in the championship rounds, round number four. Aaron Blanchfield is entering this round with over 20 head strike disparity. 20 significant strike disparity. Plan Yo, I would just kick. If I'm Blanchfield, I would just kick. At this point, you cannot enter. So just kick. My goodness, she's eating punches left and right. She's eating so many punches. Shit. Mmm. Manon Farrell looks so crisp. She needs to like either bum rush. Oh, finally. That's what she needs to do. Bum rush her. That's the only thing she can do, right? Just bum rush her. Just bum rush her. Like, forget everything. Just bum rush. Oh, look at that. Minon Fro is going for a takedown. Good defense. Massive disparity in striking. Massive. Massive disparity in striking. This is her best round, though. She has to keep going. She needs to keep going. That's her only good round. Manon Farod is not just backing down. Not as much as volume as before. But Aaron is not doing anything to even stop this. A minute and 12 seconds to go. Yeah, it's over. I mean, a much better round for um, Aaron Blanchfield, right? But it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you can't close the distance and you can't take the fight to the ground, which you should have done in the third round. She's, she looked good, Manon Farad. She definitely looked good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's over. It doesn't matter. I'm like texting right now. Oh, well, it's been a good night, though, guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Definitely going to be looking toward the next stream so we can call out some fights. Appreciate you guys. Hope you guys subscribe. Um, the event is, uh, it was good overall. The last fight, the last, you know, women's MMA, it's, um, it's, 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 it's women's MMA. Let's put it this way. So. Two to one favorite, Erin Blanchfield. I think she gets stopped here. So the corner, the corner of um for Blanchfield, we need a finish. Unload everything you have. We need a fucking finish. The absolute you need to go and just die, basically. Um, I try, my my guy. I try. Uh, I do my best to try to get on, but it's hard. You know, talking for five hours is not easy every weekend. Um, today happened to be my first. Oh, look at Aaron. A Aaron is going all out, guys. Wait, let's talk about this fight real quick. But yeah, I try to. I try to do this, but um, when I'm busy, I'm busy. Next week, I believe I'm off. I have to check my schedule. She responded well in the first minute, Erin Blanchfield. She went crazy. She went crazy. Not every week it's hard. I don't do this every week, but it's, you know, I try, I try. On good, good, good cards, I try, you know. Like, this was a good card. I feel like this was uh, such a good card for me to jump on live. So that's why I go with the energy. Now, Brandon Allen is fighting next week. I'm definitely, that's my guy. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to hop on on the main card. Let's see. Let me check my schedule right now. I'll tell you for sure. She's not going to get a finish at this point. Three minutes and 22 seconds into the fight. So. So April 6th, next week, I'm actually working, so I will not be doing a live. April 13th 13, April 13 is going to be UFC 300. And if I don't go on vacation, I want to do a live for that event for sure. Um, yeah. But in either case, man, I appreciate you guys sticking out so far. I really do. You guys made my night. It's been a great, great night. You know, obviously, uh, the main event didn't deliver... Um, the way we wanted it to deliver, but it is what it is. Unanimous decision, victory for Menon Farad at this point. Erin Blanchfield, she's going to learn from this. She's going to get stronger. Over, under, hit for the over, over 130. Yeah. Anyway, it's two minutes in. We're almost there. I do want to have it officially displayed, and then I'm just going to call it. Um, so many knockouts. Some controversy. Some plus money for tonight. It's awesome, man. Obviously, the main event. Whew, what a potty pooper.
the way the way Blanchfield started kind of dictated how the fight was gonna go. Erin Blanchfield was supposed to start fast. She was supposed to start strong, and she was supposed to finish this fight because Manon Farad, man, decision making machine right now. Excellent strikes. She's just punching the shit out of um, Blanchfield. 133 significant strikes from a non Farad. Good night, my brother. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope to see you uh, sooner rather than later. I appreciate everything. Thank you for, for making my night, man. That was awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Have a blessed week. Stay blessed. And be well. Be healthy. You know what I'm saying? I just want to finish it so hard, you know? It's like I got to finish my job. <laughs> As you can see, my hands are already on the table. I'm like running on gas fumes myself. Yep. One hundred and thirty four head strikes to ninety seven. Nineteen body shots for Fanon, thirty one for Blanchfield, twelve leg kicks to eleven, and control time is pretty much the same. One out of four takedowns for Fanon for all, but that got telegraphed and it, and she ended up in a submission attempt. For Erin Blanchfield, unanimous decision win for Manon Farad. And she comes in as an underdog, plus one, well, she 130, 150 almost, cashes it in, and um, definitely puts a masterclass on Erin Blanchfield. Imagine the robbery of Erin Blanchfield right now. <laughs> But that would be too much. That would be too much. People would stop watching UFC, right? One hundred thirty-four to ninety-seven. Yeah, that's pretty much the UFC. Yeah, same same thing that which everything that we see on the screen from ESPN is the fight stats that the UFC is um. Showing on live odds right now. So, all three unanimous decision. Manon Farad. That's the right decision. Manon Farad is calling for the title, and she will get that. They're getting a translator. Great event. Thank you for everybody. I am signing off. I got work tomorrow morning. And uh, thank you, guys. Take care. Stay blessed. And as always, catch you on the flip side.